<laughs> We're back with episode three of the Shoe Dog Podcast. There you go. Number three. Number three. Let's, it's a hat trick, bro. It's a hat trick. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, we ready. Um, how you been doing, bro? I'm good. I'm really good. I'm really, really good. Bro, I, I've, I've, been, I've been progressively putting more Fitbits on, on Instagram, as you've seen, bro. As you've seen. Yeah. Uh, you know what? We, we, wore, we, wore those, we wore those shadows. We wore some ones. We picked, we picked up the Marina ones. Reviews coming out today, by the way, or Sunday when we record this. The Marina ones is... He got games. Uh, a cop- I seen you. Oh, with the, you got games on feet 13, too. Now. 13, bro. Aren't 13 just beautiful? That panther, that panther, that black panther, bro. That black cat, <laughs> black yeah, cat, yeah. black cat, bro. That's what it's all about. That's what it's about. And people forget. People forget what that shoe, that design. Like every every Jordan shoe, fours, five, six. It's got a specific design to it. People, yeah. people know, and people know it's amazing. But, it's distinct. It's such such a distinct thing. You know it when you see it, and we love it for those reasons. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Every silhouette oh. got his got different things about it that make me love. By, by the way, those those winterized fours that I got, I think they might become my beers. Every time I, I want to just not wear a shoe, I might become I might become my beer. <laughs> I'm not you already joking. beat one. You already beat one. <laughs> I'll, I'll beat I beat the winterized twelves. So. It's only, oh, it's only, it's only okay. yeah, the, the, the winterized fours were the beaters for, for when I was actually going to the office. Now it's like the winterized fours is becoming that because I've got another pair and I've got one, one for backup. So when I, when I want to pull a clean pair out, so this is why I always, always like double up with sneakers. I really know I'm going to rock. So the winterized fours, and to be honest, they're out, out, out in the hallway near the door, and I'm like, I'm going to put them on. <laughs> I don't feel like putting anything special on. I'm going to put them on quickly and I dash to the shop. That, that is becoming my beater. Sneaker. Oh, that's a great sneaker type as a beater, bro. Yeah, not a bad beater at all. Like that might be a top, a top beater, if you will. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's a good question. But but today's show is special, bro. Yeah, I'm excited. Um I'm I'm really excited. We got our first guest on the podcast. Um appropriate guest to have for what he Ooh. brings to the table because he is Cam Dolph, the sneaker wizard. He is Shinron, the shoe dragon, he is the dawn of Jordan ones, the starfish killer himself, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the eBay sniper, the Virginia Tech lifer. <laughs> no, no, no. Man, love him in the building. Damn. The, the bro is in the building, bro. The bro is in the building. Damn, Ooh. Cam, it's lovely it to get you on shirt. there. Look at that, that! Look at that shirt. Bro. Little, little. I gotta wear this shirt today, because this is what it's bro, all about right here. Yeah, exactly. This show, this show, and that top <laughs> em- emphasizes what you're about, bro. The, like this, the the whole concept of shoe dog podcast is to get sneakers for as low as possible, and to, you emphasize that uh, you're an embodiment of that, bro. And it is, it is fantastic to get you on today because it's going to be absolutely phenomenal to have to go through this journey with you from where you started to where you are at this moment in time. And it's going to be amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited, man. I'm really, I'm actually really excited. <laughs> You're doing good today, Cam. <clears throat> Say what, what? You're doing good today. Um, I mean, my hearing's not very good, apparently, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everything, everything else seems to be working okay today. <laughs> Look, man, we want to, um, we want, I want to hear, I know I personally want to hear your story. The way you got into sneakers, in my opinion, is one of the most fascinating stories that I heard as far as somebody's beginning in the sneaker game. And also your prior history, the, your history prior to Camdolf that we know today. How did it all start for you in the sneakers? Sweet. Well, first my parents met in 1969. <laughs> and then in 19 early 1977, they had sex. Um, and then in October 19th, 1977, I was born. So that's how it all started. Next question. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> <laughs> just no, man. You know what I'm talking about. Well, you, you, that wasn't the answer to the question that you were hoping to have. Okay. Um, it, it, was, it was a good. It was a very good answer. So I, maybe, I, 
<laughs> see, I should fast forward a little bit. You know, maybe fast like forward. you know, fast forward 18 years from that. Not, not, not when I'm negative. Like actually, like when I'm old enough to buy sneakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want, we want the human being. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Not, not the pre-human being. being. Well, all right. Hopefully, there's no kids watching this. All right. So, <laughs> so when, when I was a kid, just to like, and this is a little bit. Young, and I couldn't even tell you what they were. They could have been like kangaroos or zips or something. But I remember going through this phase where you get you get the your old sneakers become your play sneakers, and your new sneakers becomes the ones that you wear to school, and you try to keep them clean and everything. And I remember very distinctly that I had this one pair of sneakers, and they were red, white, and blue. And I think they were kangaroos. And and I had to have been maybe like five or six years old. And when they turned into play sneakers, I was sad. Like. I was actually like, I love them. I, I would look at them and admire them and I, and I actually like dug them, you know? So, yeah. so that, I, that concept of sneakers like was, seemed like it came out right out of the gate. Um, I, I followed trends. So even in elementary school, I was wearing, I had 85 Jordans in third grade. Mm. Um, yeah, I rocked. I, I went through the whole Converse Chuck Taylor trend. You know, I don't if people even know this. But back in the 80s, they actually came out with a line of Chuck Taylors where they went up to your calf and then they folded down. And the fold down on the Chucks was like a different pattern or a different color or whatever. And you could, the, the holes, the metal holes, the, the eyelets would uh, fold over each other so you could actually lace them folded over. So, mm. I mean, just to, just to tell you like how far back it goes. So, um, but I, I didn't get into like expensive shoes or anything like that until I was in middle school, all right? And this is when Nike Air drops. So my first pair of Nike Airs were actually a pair of walking shoes. Like, no joke, but I like I liked them. They were dope, so, and they were kind of affordable. They were about 80 bucks. I had to throw in, you know, some birthday money to get them or whatever. Um, but in, in 1989, this kid walks into my seventh grade class and he's rocking all red with white highlights flights, right? And I just like saw that sneaker and I was like mind blown. I, mm. I had to own them. And of course I couldn't get them right away because my family wasn't the type of family that could run out to the store and just like cop the sneaker because, you know, their, their you know, young kid felt like they wanted them or whatever. So uh, there was this place called Jeans Plus, which was this you know after it leaves the foot the the foot locker or the or the champs or whatever this jeans plus place would then buy their old stock so i i walk we always get sneakers from there they would always be like six or eight months behind but i walk in and they have the flights and they're all white with blue highlights right and that like quickly became one of my favorite sneakers and if, if people are not familiar with this i i, I gave you kind of the, the story right it was 1989 <clears throat> Yeah, are those, those, are the, are those yeah. the kangaroos? Oh my god, dude! <laughs> I have not seen those. Oh my god! Yes, those are like the first pair of sneakers I can remember loving. Kangaroos. Pretty, they you don't. Know about I, kangaroos, I, they have I, I a velcro pocket on the side. I had to pull out, bro, because you said the red, white, and blue, and I said, I just looked for it, and then here comes a kangaroo with a red, white, and blue. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I'm and for kangaroos, for I those kangaroos. for those that don't know, kangaroos are. They're they're right now. Kangaroos are at a different tier in sneakers. Um, I see kangaroo releases here and there. I'm not sure how frequently they come, but when I see them, it's normally a premium price that comes on that release. So they still out there, and they make some dope stuff. I haven't been able to grab my size because it's crazy how fast they sell out. Interesting. It's crazy yeah. how fast they sell out. Man. What you're saying is that I had taste like right out of the gate. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, bro. You was you was you was born with style, bro. That's what I say. Born with and style. So, <laughs> I was born in 82. So when by the time I got around to um noticing sneakers and wanting sneakers, kangaroos was gone. If it even was uh, as big in Atlanta as it was in a lot of places. Cause I hear people talk about kangaroos and giving them legendary status, but I can't remember them as a kid. <clears throat> yeah. Bro, the U UK kangaroos were beaters. So basically, they were readily available here. So it may maybe it was more of a a, um, a shift between the UK and the, and the US where 
It was more, it's like New Balance. New Balance has not really been a thing in the UK until like last. Maybe maybe it's like more of a shift in you didn't have you guys didn't really have kangaroos. We had a lot of kangaroos, and there wasn't that kind of trade between the UK and, and the EU and the EU and and the states. So in in reality, that that's similar to what what's happening with New Balance. New Balance is coming over with a surge here. So it is it is kind of int- interesting to see from different states and different countries what what the kind of trends are. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. Yeah, yeah, those those are them. Like I, those are them. <laughs> Those are, <laughs> those are them. Those are them. Those be them. Those be them. Those be them. <laughs> that's crazy. Um, yeah. That's, so that's, so that's... um so we were talking about kangaroos and then the, it was the flights, right? Yeah. So like the 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 one plus one equals two is they were called flights and it was 1989. So if anybody I know sneaker history, there's a retro. It's called the flight 89, and uh, it shares the Jordan four. Uh, lower so it's got the midsole and sole of a jordan 4 uh, very few shoes shared their silhouette with the nike um, that actually stopped happening later on but it was a pretty dope shoe it's like easily one of my favorites so so going through it i had you know i had flight 89s i had jordan 5 fire reds um, in 1990 um, i transitioned over into yeah, those are the ones that I had were all white with blue, which they okay. still they also make today. Um, and the ones that the kid walked in with, I have those red ones right there. Actually, I have about fifteen Ooh. pairs of that sneaker right now. Jeez. They are, they're nice. They're really, really nice. To be honest, yeah. they're really, very really nice. Yeah. Um, that was, that's a cool silhouette right there. It's it's such a cool shoe. If you guys don't rock them, actually, Kanye loves his shoe. Um, Kanye wears flight 89s or used to before Yeezy. Do we really care about what Kanye wears? I mean, I just want I mean, people to, I want nobody, people to understand right? that like. Nobody even knows who this guy is. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> Damn, no. He's only popular to, to sneakerheads, right? Word, 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 word. <laughs> so yeah, I, I wore a bunch of sneakers that people remember. I had maestros i had air raids i had hirachi oh maestros um, i had um yeah let me think what was what's another good one that i had uh i, I transitioned over into shell toes in the mid 90s with everybody else during the grunge era you know adidas superstars but then when i went to college i didn't i, ro- I started rocking tims so i just like pretty much stuck to tims for a good amount of college and then went back to shell toes for a bit um but, you know, basically you just got out of this, the concept of like following the trends on sneakers and everything else. So fast forward quite a bit. So we, we stopped in like the mid 90s and we come back in and it's I think it's like 2008 at this point. So um, my daughter is not you know, like we haven't even had any kids yet. We're in a mall in Norfolk, Virginia, which is called MacArthur. And I walk into a finish line and I'm walking down the wall looking at the sneakers and I see them. And, and again, I'm not following sneakers. I have no concept of retros or anything like that. And on that freaking wall is a pair of Flight 89s. Mm. And interestingly <clears throat> enough, it is a pair of Flight 89s with orange on them. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if I, it's like if you get to know me, like go to my Instagram or watch yeah. any of our lives or whatever, I have, I have a favorite color. <laughs> So we well, you know that, bro. <laughs> so, so why, Cam? Why is orange your favorite color? Please let us know. Because I am a hokey. Yes, I am. A, I am a Virginia Tech hokey. <laughs> Virginia, Virginia Tech, Tech hokey. lifer. Yeah, Virginia Tech lifer, and uh, it's orange and maroon. I already liked orange to begin with, but it just became like, you know, unavoidable once I went to college, and 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 or, orange and maroon were the colors, so. I ended up can, like can, 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 can we say, Cam? Can we say that you're you're a, you're a shoe dog when it comes to orange? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but <laughs> with it is it's a great coincidence that orange Jordans are so great, coveted, and, and coveted, they, sought after. They were coveted. Like the fact yeah. that your your favorite color was already orange, if Nobody loved the shattered backboard. You was gonna love it just oh, yeah. because it was orange already. One hundred percent. 
one hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, orange is the flavor. Orange is what my you know the shadow backboard colorway, the history histrionics behind that. Everything led to that being colorway, and and now is like really hard to get. Re, every, it's literally impossible. Even even when we was looking for those um those low the shot backboard lows, they sold out. They were like, wow, they're gone, they're gone. I, um, I still I still can't get my hands on them yeah. for a decent price. I'm I'm not gonna pay. <laughs> I'm not gonna pay the DS resale. Well, um, what was the DS resale, bro? Last oh, time I checked, it was around three hundred. I refuse to pay three hundred dollars for a Jordan One Low, if it ain't a Travis or. I'm I'm I'm, te- I'm tempted to grab you the neutral gray One Lows and just, just customize them to to, to the to the. <laughs> well, to the grays grays already? I do have neutral grays. Yeah. Okay, because that's a colorway in itself. Like those shoes are yeah. amazing. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, the neutral gray. I haven't I haven't worn it yet. Um, I feel I feel like I'm holding it because it's all. I now look. I got all white lows already but that neutral gray just that little bit of gray that they put in that swatch when they made that shoe it and the materials the 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 jordan one low triple white ain't nothing like a neutral gray as far as construction oh, and quality the materials the materials are phenomenal on that like the materials on that sneaker i've i well do you know how many I held? I held three of them, and the material materials on on the neutral gray one low is fantastic, bro. Like yeah. that that sne- that that material is butter. Like you, it is literally but, like crazy. Yeah, it's crazy, crazy because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much it's pretty much you can't touch it, bro. It is literally buttercup, buttercup, bro. It is absolutely oh, yeah. Over the summer, they became instant beaters for me, like instant. And 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 the thing is. If you, if you if you go out, we'll come we'll come to. I know we're gonna go transition into your what's what's happening now, but we'll, bro, if you if those sneakers are still sitting in some places, those you can you can still pick up those sneakers um, from selected foot, foot sites, and and it, um and like they they are still around. They are still around. Give give me a second. My cam keeps flickering. Let me just try and do something. Give me two seconds. I kind of felt like it was a horror movie where. Like we're about to see like the monster appear once the flash comes back in. There's something like, and like, oh no, TJ, turn around, TJ, behind you. Right? Didn't have that feeling. So, so I didn't, I didn't want to stop it because we we flowed so good. But I knew at some point he was gonna stop it. He got to get that fixed. But let's continue with you. No um, oh, word, word. Yeah. So flight 89s. Flight 89s on the wall, finish line. And then uh, at that time, I had already been into eBay, uh, but I had been, I bought random things like a video game I wanted or, or something. And so I started doing some research and I found out that like it was a retro shoe and there were multiple colorways. So then I started like trying to acquire different colors of the shoe. Um, before that, I would just walk into a finish line or a Foot Locker. I'd go straight to their clearance section and I'd just buy whatever shoe looked dope. So, um, like for example, I bought, I would buy, I bought a pair of dunks for like 30 bucks on clearance. Mm. God forbid that happened today. But back mm. in the day, you could actually just walk into a shoe store, go to the clearance rack, and there would be a pair of dunks for 30 bucks. And like you'd be hard, you'd be hard pressed to find any dunk OG um, retro sitting around now. Like yeah, it, yeah. I don't know what part of the country that might happen in. Um, I know it TJ has seen dunks, but they weren't um the OG style or the OG colorways. He's seen we, dunks we're talk, yeah, we, we're talking about yeah, yeah, we're talking about uh, the retail, fragment dunks. Yeah, like, the same still retail, but yeah, yeah I'm we, talking we're talking about thirty dollars. Like I have I own a pair of dunks that I paid closest, thirty dollars for the close the close the, the closest I've got to the closest I got to was um, seeing, not picking this up, seeing a size 15 Concord from 2018 <laughs> go for like 82, for, for 82 pounds. 
in the UK. <laughs> well, obviously, 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 no, not a lot of people of size fifteen here, bro. It's it's all the basketballers, but but the basketball is not a big big. Um, the NBA, there's not NBA stars in, in London look, as we call them. But like from my perspective, that size that size fifteen uh, was. Um, 82 pounds that's the closest I've got to it that's the closest I've got to what you just did, did Cam but yo, yeah that, well that again was, that, was, that, was, that was like again 2008 I'm not talking about like yesterday yeah, yeah exactly you know? exactly yeah you're not gonna find a dunk sitting if you do see it it'll be retail and it'll probably be a size 15 or 17 yeah. or something like that <laughs> so so going back to it the, the flight 89 was my gateway drug like straight mm. up 100% my, my gateway drug so as soon That's, as I started to try to acquire that shoe, this unfortunate, just kind of see that behind me right <laughs> there, um, that this like, unfortunately, this, this can of worms got opened and um, I thought to myself, what else have they retroed? What other shoes from my childhood are out there that I can buy brand new? Yeah. And then I discovered yeah. that they had basically retroed every Jordan. Now, I didn't own every Jordan um, because I couldn't afford them, but I wanted them like super bad when I was a kid. And now right. I'm an adult and we're like, you know, dual income, no children at this point. So I started to do some research, but there's, there's some caveats to this, right? So it wasn't just like, I'm just going to walk in the store and I'm going to buy like full price Jordan four. I was pretty frugal. So I kind of set rules for myself. It was using eBay. It was um, $50 max. Like, was my was my goal like maybe i could push like 60 or whatever but 50 was my goal and um it became more of a like a hunting mission right yeah. so it wasn't walk into the store see the blue shirt try it on fits good go to the counter buy the shirt right it was hours of, of time each night scouring ebay using generic filters um trying to just find these shoes so i fell into the jordan ones because we went to a local shoe store, which was uh, like a privately owned one, and they had metallic green, do the right thing, Jordan ones, on sale on the clearance rack for fifty dollars <laughs> in the shoe store. So I bought what? those. I bought those dead stock. What? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, right? I just sold a pair of those for three hundred dollars. <laughs> oh yes. my god! <laughs> and I've also sold a, another pair in the last six months for three fifty. And 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 I'm pretty sure you felt like this when you saw them. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was really cool. It was my birthday, so my, my, I didn't even pay for them. My sister what? bought them for, for me for my birthday, like you know. Um, but yeah, so it's cool. I, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm gonna say, I, I, I just, I just realized one thing when you said, when you said, when you start pointing at the back there, right, on the back there, you was like, you're not a sneakerhead if you can't do this on live. <laughs> 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 there you go. There you go, guys. There you go. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not saying. So some people are start 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 a kit sneakerhead, which I'm just picking up here. But yeah. you eventually get there. You will eventually get there if you if you try hard enough and. Carry on cancer over that. <laughs> so yeah, we'll just, I'll just carry you through it though. So um, I don't, I don't like, I don't really dig eights or above. Uh, they weren't because at the time, if you think about when I got out of sneakers when I went to college, um, you know, really up until sevens were what I like. I noticed around me and cared about and wished I had. So my twos were two thousand four um, Chicago's. Mm. I never got threes because I set rules. So I never actually was able at the time. I never was able to cop a pair of threes because I could not find a pair of threes in the price point I wanted. And at the time I didn't restore sneakers or anything. And like all the threes had cracked midsoles, like all of them. Yeah. So if I wanted to buy a pair for 50 is, bucks, is that, is that, paint, to, is that paint cracking? Yeah, or is paint that, cracking. Oh, it damn, was, it was that, horrible <laughs> back then, like horrible. It's a lot better now, actually. I, I think I think they I think they take um Nike of um or Nike Jordan have actually adjusted their flexibility of that paint because it feels like like nowadays when you put a four on it doesn't correct like I've seen I've seen fours from from like 10, 10, 10, 15 years ago that are yeah. just absolutely the paint just gone it is literally yeah. it's oxidized so so quickly and it's become so brittle that it's just flaked away and, it did yeah it really did it's it's like you couldn't find a four or a three. 
um, without like that cracking going on. It was it was it was crazy. Couldn't even believe how people were paying the prices they were. So I never got a three because it was never able to meet my rules. My four was this is crazy. Was the original release 2006 Jordan Four Black Cat? Mm. Um, again, fifty dollars. Then my fifty dollars. Yeah, my five. This is even better. You ready for this? My five was a 1999 Jordan Five Metallic OG Ooh. All, and the dude had the receipt in the box. Sheesh. Fifty bucks. Sheesh. Fifty bucks, man. Fifty bucks. Bro, my six, bro, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> bro. Damn, bro. That, 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 that's. I wish, I wish those days were back. I wish those days were back, and we could just pick up the sneakers we wanted. Because at the end, it, at the moment, it's all like, like I'm, I'm. I, you know what? It's a sad, sad, sad state of affairs at the moment. Like, we are, we are seeing what we're seeing with those Jordan. One, well, it start, it started off with ones. Uh, after the Yeezys, it was the one, the one push. Then the SB push. Now it's the four push. Now we're seeing the two push. I know Cam, you love twos. You actually, actually love twos. So I'm, I feel sorry because like back, like, nobody was looking at twos a year ago, like no. like they are now. And yeah. now you're gonna struggle to get some of these twos. So <laughs> you you got my raffle yeah. into, bro. Don't worry, you got my raffle into it. Yeah, it's all good. I've been on the hunt. I've been on the hunt for a pair of Chicago twos, whether it be the high or the low for a decent price for the past three years or so. Um, I remember going into, this was the day of the Shadow 3.0 release. So I didn't like the shoe. So I said, you know what? I'm going to flip it because I didn't know anybody. I was still uh, fairly new to the sneaker game. I had no friends in the sneaker game didn't really know too many people that were into sneakers the way I had started being into them. So I said, I'm going to go to a local resale shop and I'm going to flip them. 170, actually 160. That shoe was 160 before the price hike. And the guy at the shop offered me 190. I said, nah, I didn't, I didn't drive over here to get 190. So I'm walking out of the store with my shoe in bag, receipt, all that. Release day, uh, they released at 10. I went and picked them up. I was at that resale shop by 1130. So this is around 12 o'clock. I'm walking out of the store. Two young guys. Soon as I walk out the store, obviously they waiting on me. Hey, what size are those? I said, 11. How much you want for them? I told him, give me 240. He gave me the 240 cash out. That was actually my first ever cash app, cash app transaction. Okay. Word. <laughs> so down the street from that store, there was, and mind you, that, that story comes with a caveat because I thought I was going to be a reseller, but it didn't turn out. <laughs> <that way. laughs> it, didn't, it didn't turn out that way for me. I had a change of heart. Uh, I, I did kind of well in the beginning, but the more I got into the culture, the more I realized I didn't want to okay. be a reseller. Hey, it's, it's toxic, so, it's toxic. yeah, I go, I go to the it's a thrift shop down the street from the resale shop. The Royals, the Jordan One Royals, the all blue ones yeah. that you showed uh, last week, I believe it was hyper royal. the hyper, the original hype, not not the hyper royal from last year, right? The hyper royal that's all blue with white. Is yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Those. <laughs> They were probably seven out of ten. Those were, I, I believe, I want to say they were my size because I remember being mad at myself after the fact. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think they were my size. They were there, probably seven out of ten condition. All they needed was really a cleanup and some some crease uh, re uh, removal. They were about sixty bucks. Oh, bro. And, and there was the Dang. Chicago 2. That's crazy. Low. They were probably about uh, 50 bucks, bro. And I did, did not you pull the trigger on either shoe. <laughs> That's crazy. Man, bro. <laughs> Had I known then 
what I know now, which which <laughs> makes me matter. No, now I have I have a, pl- a ton of that, man. Believe me, Shoot. ton of that. Some of the sneakers that I flipped, like doing the whole pre-owned, clean up, resell, you know, buy low, sell high kind of thing. Some yeah, of the that, sneakers that I let go. That Chicago like known. That Chicago too low, bro. It's it, that's like a five hundred dollar shoe right now. Yeah, yeah. So th- th- this this is what we're talking about with uh, midsole cracking. Like when when Cam was talking about midsole cracking, and that actually was it, one of the it, shoes that did it. Like that is one of the shoes I remember seeing all yeah. the time that was cracking. The, the, and, and 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 you know what? This year we're going to see the re-release of the fire freeze, so we we'll, we will be able to judge whether that paint holds up. But that that is what you expect. To, you know, that was what's happening with that sneaker in terms of that midsole stripping. But it's always it's yep. always it's not it's never hardly the white. It's always the color that actually strips like the black on the foot on the breads. You just I've seen a really bad picture of um, the, the spread four just absolutely stripped. And all you see is just the white pairing through. And you're like, oh, damn, 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 damn. Well, the fact but, that it flaked off, it gives you your answer right there because paint paint should not be flaking off, which means it wasn't adhering to the foam. Like, we know yeah. way too much about, like, restoring and customizing sneakers to now. Like, I, if I knew, again, if I knew then what I know now, I would have understood that... Yep. Number one, I could have bought those sneakers and I, I could have repainted them, no problem. Number two, yep, yep. I knew, I would have known exactly what was happening. Those the yep, reason yep. it wasn't because the paint was there wasn't enough layers of paint and they weren't adhering to the foam. So yeah, yeah, which is the major issue. So um, exactly, exactly. Jordan Six was an Oreo. Uh, it was a gift from my wife. We walked into the outlets, <clears throat> walked into the outlets, and bought Oreo Sixes for <clears throat> for eighty dollars. And and, and 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 just, just just to touch on that, just to touch on that, when Jordan Brand told you, she told us these were the moonlights. You are fake news because <laughs> they 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 sat and as you can see, Cam went and picked them up from the outlets because they were called the Oreos before they were even called the moonlights, and nobody was waiting in that moonlight to pick those um, Oreos up. So, so, if, so one more if time, they retro. You are fake news. If if they retro, <laughs> the Oreo six. Will they call it Moonlight or will they leave it Oreo? I don't know. Because it's good. They go retro that shoe. They have to. Yeah. It's a beautiful yeah, yeah. shoe, man. They retro uh, do, do, the, the lightning fours. They have to retro that shoe. So, so do, do you think do you think they called it the the moonlights from the Oreos because uh, there was an Oreo biscuit and then basically they don't want to name, get copy stricken off of a sneaker name? Maybe. I think so. I don't, okay. And it wasn't I they weren't called the Oreos. You know what I mean? They were nicknamed the Oreos. Yeah, you yeah. nicknamed the Oreos. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the problem is, is then sneakers sneakers didn't exist, so they didn't nickname their own shoes then. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and, but now they do nickname their shoes on the sneakers <laughs> app. They're trying to get ahead of the nicknames, so they can't use Oreo clearly. Yeah, yeah. Well, we know we know the the sneaker nickname is a a product of the sneaker culture. Yes. Yeah, maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe somebody in the the factories <laughs> or the uh, distribution or the headquarters of of these companies give the shoe a nickname or maybe it don't stick but we i learned nicknames from the streets like yeah, you the, said, street, the street name always sticks the street man it's the street name always sticks. so like like i have however much i'm trying to call not call these jordan four crimsons the crimsons the, the street name is the red thunders yeah and i and, and I, I i said it in my youtube video i was like that's blasphemous you can't you can't call them you can't call them the red thunders don't, they don't even touch the original thunders um that they're terrible they're absolutely terrible quality wise but like the, the street name for them if you went to somebody on on like if you went to a reseller or if you went to somebody that you want to buy it from if you told them i want the crimson they'll look at you like you mean the red thunders they see that so yeah. that, 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 that's, that's instantly that's the reaction you'll get yeah yeah for sure Maybe they, the, maybe you should call them thunder stricken instead because they look <laughs> they look like they've been hit with lightning. Well, the the original the original thunder because thunder doesn't have a color because thunder ain't something you can see. The black and yellow <laughs> being the 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 partner of the lightning, it made sense because you won't see lightning if you don't hear thunder. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it made sense, but red thunder. I understand it's a color swap. It's like it's like a scorpion. It's literally scorpion turning into ermac. 
you know, yeah, but, bro, yellow bro, to black do, do, do you reckon? Do you reckon? Do you reckon they should have called it the red, the the red after thunder when it hits the fucking tree <laughs> and it burns the tree down? It's says red thunder. He's insane. Like, let's just be honest. Let's be honest. So the, the th- thunder, thunder is associated with white. When you see white thunder, like when you see thunder in the sky, we're, t- we're talking about the actual sky rather than sneakers. So in reality, yellow is probably a bit more of a reflective color to that white than it is to that red. So yeah. maybe they should have recalled it the after effect of thunder. <laughs> well, and the thing is, is you're you're still using the word wrong, right? So, so like, let's just I'm gonna put. Okay, sorry, let me put my engineering hat on. Okay. <laughs> Thunder is the noise that's made after the lightning hits. The exactly. Ground. Exactly. So, so everybody knows that trick where you count, and every five seconds is a mile away or something like that when it comes to, yeah. uh, right, to thunder. Right. So thunder is a noise that's made when lightning hits the ground it's a sonic boom that's what that's what thunder is but let's let's get off the technical stuff and get back to the to the fun Talk so about i only have one other shoe one other shoe that i bought because remember i told you i was going to stop at seven and they were <coughs> um they were citruses so citrus sevens um 2006 citrus sevens. Bruh. yeah uh, you, you know you know you know it's <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be a round of applause for that sneaker coming out this yeah. year bro I've been waiting for that sneaker. Man, to come I need out. two. I, I need bro, two of those. You talk about a double up. That's that's a double up worthy sneaker yeah. because it is a, well, it is I'm, a really I'm, cool I, I, exactly. I like I like the yellow. I like the red. I like the all black up and bro. That sneaker is fire. And do, 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 I will say one thing. I I was I had, I had a chance to pick those up V and DS, but I refused to because I knew as soon as I put my feet in it. Oh, not V and DS. The DS. I mean, but if I if I put my feet in it. It would have crumbled. It's, it's, I, I'm not. I, I don't risk. I don't. I don't risk. Yeah, I don't risk picking up a sneaker that's maybe five to six years old. Uh, that's my limit. I think that's my limit. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'll wait for retro. And I'm so thankful that sneakers coming yes. out this year. And see with uh, that, is, I, I don't yeah. display shoes. I think that shoe may be for someone that displays shoes. This is a yes. 2006. Right yeah. Right. I'm gonna have to get used to seeing like the camera going the opposite direction. By the way. <laughs> um, yeah, this this is a 2006. So I'm actually doing I'm doing a restore customization. So it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's but uh, thing. but that's a 2006. So um, so then there's more to the story because it's it's all about how every like the entire being of who I am or whatever came together, right? So I'm also a watch person at this time. I'm not really anymore to do the Apple Watch, but back then I collected watches. I had G-Shocks. I got into higher end timepieces. Um, you know, my first watch my, was a wedding gift from my wife. It was just so, and that was again like a gateway drug into bigger and better watches. So I, I fell into this watch on eBay where I saw it sell for seven seventy. What was it? Was, it was a Tag Heuer Link Chronograph Automatic. So this is a watch that normally used was selling between fifteen hundred and two grand. And the fact that it sold for seven seventy, I was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe I missed that auction! I'm so pissed." And then next thing I know, I see the seller relist the watch. So I message the guy, and I'm like, "Why did you? Why did you relist the watch?" He's like, "Yeah, the stupid asshole in the action. You know, he he won it, and he never paid me." And I was like, "Well, are you willing to sell the watch for the seven seventy? And it was a pawn shop. So the guy was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'll sell the watch for seven seventy. So I looked at my wife, and I was like, "Hey." Uh, there's this watch for 770 and I really want it. She's like, where are you going to get the money for that? <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so then I told her, I was like, you know, I, I know because because when you're doing all this research and you're trying to buy sneakers low, it's not just about finding the sneakers low. It's about learning the sneaker culture and learning the dynamics and then learning like the names and the, but the value, you learn the value of the sneakers. So I knew that every pair that I picked up was worth a lot more than what I paid because I saw all these pairs I wasn't going to buy and I, I couldn't afford them what they were selling for. Right. So, so I told her, I was like, I'll, I'll just sell some sneakers. So the, the three sneakers I chose to s- sell were, I chose to sell the black cat force. Mm. I chose to sell, and I understand I didn't wear them. Like they were worth too much money. And at that time I would not put a $300 sneaker on my foot, you know? Wow. So I sold my 1999 Jordan five metallics. Mm. And I sold my Jordan Six Oreos, which I did rock, but um, I realized that I'm not a Jordan Six guy, which I never owned when I was a kid, because of the height of it. 
it actually yeah, yeah. like it hurts the back of my leg. So I've never really been a Jordan six person. Um, so then I sold those three pairs of sneakers. I sold the Jordan five metallics for 500. I sold the Jordan three black cats for 350, and I sold the uh, the Oreo sixes for 250. So you had you you had <laughs> enough money to get the watch from two shoes. Two shoes, but and I didn't know that. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> damn. So did you damn. get the watch? I did. It's not with me. It's upstairs. But yes, I, and and my funny <laughs> thing is, I've sold off all of my major timepieces. With the exception of that watch. Like, that's the one watch where I'm going to own it the rest of my life. I'm going to give it to Lincoln, you know, later. That, that um, is like a generational thing. We just keep passing along the generations. I mean, hey, that's a, that it's is not definitely... Like a, it's not, yeah, it's not a Rolex, but it's still a, a high-end timepiece, you know? So, definitely, thing. definitely, 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 yeah. definitely beautiful It's thing. the significance. It holds, it holds significance to you, yep. nostalgia, because it led you to... The sneaker culture. Yeah, it, 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 it's literally, it literally like, literally is like a um, heirloom reason, now because now you've got a a a, a pass along, and you you are, I'm definitely sure you would teach um, your son the meaning of of that watch and how important it is. So oh, yeah, he would never, sure. he would never sell that. That's <laughs> to say, he yeah, would never sell that. Such, and it's such a great watch. Like it's such a cool watch. Um, it's beautiful, by the way. Um, actually, you know, because we have the whole screens thing going up, I will, I'll pull it up here. So. Um, tag your uh, link, and is, is that is that was that the gateway gateway drug to um into restoring and and reselling um your restorations and stuff like that for you, Cam? Yes. Yeah, so I will tell you that in one second as soon as I find this watch. You gotta uh, find the watch. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, I'm a, I'm. I'm super lightweight when it comes to watches. I, I just bought a couple of G-Shocks because I started paying attention to uh, watch culture and started consuming some of the content from watch culture. And it's it's just as serious, if not more serious, because it's more expensive than sneaker culture. You can oh, it's, pay. It is expensive, yeah. There there are there are sneakers out there that uh, people are selling for $2,000, $3,000, $4,000. But that's kind of few and far between in the sneaker culture and the watch culture. A guy would be happy to pay fifty thousand for a Rolex Daytona. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's Ridiculous. cheap. <laughs> that's cheap um, for so, a Daytona. So, so, uh, you, Cam, you should start a separate account called Watch These Sneaks and Fits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that this is the watch. This is this is my watch. That bracelet uh, is stupid. Yeah, well, the it link, is, the link bracelet's really cool. Like each one of the links, of course, is separate. And when you take them out, you actually you know, there's a screw, there's a initial screw in the back, and then each one of them has pins on the inside. And so every every link going down the chain holds the previous link into place until the last one gets screwed into place. So oh, it, that it's, is it's, crazy. It's really cool. It's like a Damn. puzzle. It's like a puzzle when you put it together. Um, yeah so of course it's got the rotating bezel um it's a oh i'm gonna mess it up mm, i don't remember the movements anymore but it's it's a super common movement which is the reason why it's not like crazy expensive so whenever you see the dials where you have your so of course you know there's chronograph and seconds right right so um so the idea is that you have the vertical dials and one on the left that is a 7850 an ETA. It's an ETA 7850 movement. And it's probably one of the least expensive movements for an automatic chronograph. If you ever see the dial over here, you're talking like a much more significant cost um, mm. in the watch because it's a much more complicated movement. This is a non not as complicated movement. And, and if anybody knows anything about watches or wants to learn about watches, the idea is the more complicated the movement, the more expensive the watch. Yeah, yeah, so if yeah. you get into stuff like if you Google Turbillion, um, Turbillion watches will run like as much as a house. <laughs> because they're, and the concept of a... Yeah. House watch. There's a house watch. Yeah. <laughs> like the, concept, the concept of a Turbillion is it's not just, it's not just horizontal I'm just looking movement. at King's face. <laughs> He's gone. House, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
a house, dude. A house. There's watches that are that run in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, and it's not just because of diamonds. It's because they're oh, handmade. The they're one off. Um, it's like the concept of a Ferrari, but in a watch form. And then um, Turbillions have so a normal watch has only horizontal movement, right? So everything in the watch is is horizontal. If you have a Turbillion, it actually has vertical movement too. Wow. So so that's one of the reasons why they're so expensive. Ding. I've, I've seen. Yeah, I've nice. seen. Uh, do you know Jake, Jacob? Uh, Jacob and Co. They've yeah. got some fantastic watches. Uh, they, they go. They for go for like quarter of a million. Like, and it, obviously some of it's based on diamond, but some of it's based yeah. on that handcraft. I, I, I keep it. I keep an eye out because one day maybe I'll be able to touch a watch like that. But bro, yeah. those watches are crazy. Yeah. The design. No, I, 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 I like a crazy design watch. I like it. It's like the, the, I, I saw. I saw one of the designs was like a dragon encompassed into the actual mechanism, and it comes out, and the mechanism sits there, and there's a globe in there. It's like, whoa, that's beautiful. That's yeah. gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah. And I would happily swap this for that. I happily would wear that. Yeah. I, I, I forget the Apple Watch. Forget the Fitbit. Forget everything else. I would wear just a time piece that's absolutely beautiful because that's becoming really rare. That's becoming really, really rare now. It's where everybody's got everybody's got this black patch. Nobody's got that time piece that looks absolutely epic. I, I, I'm so so down for wearing something like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's a different feel too. Like the weight of it on your wrist. Um, you know, it's just it's amazing. I, I just wish there was some way for me to get the same feeling from that watch and all the technology that I'm now used to. And also for watch culture, um, doing aftermarket changes to the watch depreciates the watch. Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. I've learned that over time that the all the this, the wrappers that go and put a bunch of diamonds and crush the face and all this bezel and the, the 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 band and everything you're actually depreciating the value of the watch when you do that so for anybody that's out there that is interested or is in the watch culture those are things that you got to know the more original the watch yeah. is even when it comes to swapping out a Bro. band if a guy sells Bro. you a watch with an aftermarket <laughs> band it's not as yep. worth it's yep. not worth as much as it used to be yeah bro look, it's look, actually look like it's like a numbers matching car is what it's like look look right. at, look at that look how awesome that mechanism is like yeah, that that is crazy. that is like a that is like a see through you i love and the thing is the, the beauty of this is that you can actually see the mechanism working as mm -hmm. as as the watch is going and yeah. it looks it looks awesome i i this is what i'm aspiring to one day to actually obtain one of these like beautiful time pieces and it's 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 like wearing a work of art on your on your wrist it's yeah that gorgeous. is ridiculous i ain't never That's seen gorgeous. it like that before have you have, have you not like they did i'm just i just went onto the jacob 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 co website to actually go and see what i looked at the other day bro look look i know i know i know this is mint encrusted diamond encrusted whatever this is the bugatti this is the bugatti Chev chevron watch bro like this is crazy this is crazy bro it's yeah. literally designed like a Bugatti um, engine. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. That, that I don't I don't want to even fathom what the price of that the price of that watch is because like um, it will probably make me cry. Yeah, it's probably, <laughs> it's probably close to a million. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but oh, hold on, let me just see, let me see if we can play this video because like have a look at this. Whoa! It's like, actually got how... pistons in it, bro. It does have pistons. That's insane. Like, have you have you seen the pistons on this thing, bro? Wow. The way it functions, it is is designed like a Bugatti Chevron. Like, yeah. literally, the watch is amazing. And see that to the horizontal movement and everything. Mm, yeah, exactly. I, I, I don't know how we deteriorated from, from sneakers to, to watches, but <laughs> yes. let's, just, let's, just, let's just view this for a little second, bro, because this is amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. Yeah, the diamonds in I, it. I mean, I don't... They, 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 could, they could take the diamonds out. They could yeah. take the diamonds out and, and replace them. But that mechanism... Oh, my God, I own a diamond watch. Yeah. 
<laughs> but okay, <laughs> okay, we deter from the subject, but we go back. Yeah, to the I, don't, I don't need, I don't need that much attention. I, I'm used to getting attention. I'm used to getting the type of attention where people are looking down. <laughs> yeah, that, the, that thing, watch, the only thing is yeah. also like the people that own that watch probably also pay security. Oh. So and like the people that own that watch probably own a Bugatti, a Bugatti anyway. So yeah. like, or they live in Dubai. Yeah. Like, exactly, exactly, <laughs> where, where exactly. It's like, where it's normal to wear a watch like that. Do, 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 you, re- do you reckon if you if you if you heard it like this, it goes broom broom. <laughs> it's got some re- it's got some it's got some horsepower on that on that on that actual watch. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's a dyno or watch. That's cool. That that'd be quite that'd be quite interesting to say, into the experiment. <laughs> but so, sorry, bro, we go back to what you were saying. I, I just went off subject, bro. <laughs> no, it's it's cool, man. It's cool. Um I mean where were we by the way? Oh, so sell the shoes by the watch. Right. So there's mm-hmm. there's this moment where I kind of realized that I accidentally flipped sneakers for profit, right? Light bulb. Like, yeah. Yeah, and so, um, and of course, the the sneakers that I wanted, there was lots of sneakers I never bought because well, I didn't buy the, the sheer volume of them because I wasn't trying to spend the money. It clearly, I had the rules of no more than fifty bucks for the sneaker, all that type of stuff. So then, I, I while I was doing all the research and scouring for sneakers, hunting for sneakers, I was I started to buy sneakers in every size between eight and thirteen that I knew were like a like a steal and then i could then in turn sell them and at the time this is before yeezy dropped right so this is like um probably 2000 2010 2011 time frame um jordan's like every retro and foam posits every jordan and every re- and every foam posit was like crazy it was nuts like the foam posits themselves were reselling for like 300 bucks used and mm. people couldn't even give a damn about a phone positive today, really. So, but every single Jordan that released was just sought after completely, as long as it was a, a an original retro. So I just started buying these sneakers. And and then when I got them home, I would clean them, I would relace them, I would take the photographs of them. Um, but and here's here's the thing about being an eBay seller. If you don't have a history and a rating you can't sell for the price you want to sell them for. So mm-hmm. when I first started reselling, and this is going to sound crazy, I would go into like finish line, Foot Locker, whatever. I would find whatever's on clearance. I would buy it. I would walk into TJ Maxx, like any of these places. And then mm-hmm. I would sell the shoes at cost just to have the experience of selling to a buyer and having the buyer rate me and leave feedback. Yeah. So I wasn't making any money, but I was, I was, and my wife was like, my wife understood this completely. She was like, she was like, wow, I can't believe you're doing this. But I was, I was buying sneakers Shit. so that I could just in turn sell them, um, not and, making any money, and, just, just to build my eBay rating because and, and, and you that's, find a, that's that as everything. Well. And you find that as well with when you with it, like let's just let's just take us take our, take a, take us ourselves out of the box and let's think of ourselves as the consumer so if if i if i was to go on ebay and i was to say all right cool i want to buy to say i want to buy did what what released this weekend which was the marina ones and i first thing i would instantly do before this is before the verification that verification yes. changed a lot this is, this is then, years um, before authentication this is years years before this is years before StockX. this is years before go this is years before any other reselling platforms were there ebay started it all ebay was the global platform so let's let, that's when that's what you gotta remember take your take yourself away from now to 10 years back so when if i was if i was just me 10 years back and you were selling me like a retro jordan i'm like okay let me check first thing i'll do is check your rating and then check your positive reviews and then check if you say for you to buy in terms of reading for your negative reviews because what, what i tend to do is I ignore the positive reviews because like you could get one of your friends to put a positive review or somebody yeah. else could put so I go to your negative reviews and read what what's there. If yeah. I if the negative reviews are little complaints like, oh, it's late shipping, oh this, that, then I okay, then I can trust you a bit more. And then I'll go and see like what the condition of shoes be that that's that that's that was the that was the check and Cam, you're hundred percent right. Is before we are where we are at the moment, it was always do your due diligence on the seller. And then 
give your money give your money there because even though the eBay's got a really good return policy, it, you still could get scammed. You still could get scammed. Um, and bro, like ten years back, I was watching videos with um, we 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 have judge with a judge Judy or something like that. The 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 the, the courts yeah. where they actually um, small claims courts. Claims court, yeah. They, yeah, it's more clever. Like, there was a there was a review. Um, there was a, there was a incident where somebody had bought somebody spent five hundred pounds or five. No, 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 no. They're not the Yeezys. I, I remember that one as well. But somebody had spent f- f- three to four hundred dollars and was sent a picture of a phone. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was real. So, <laughs> that was real, and it was they they took into to small claims court, and then they were said, well. You said you wanted five hundred dollars for this picture, and he goes, "Well, you said it was the phone," and there was this whole dispute about who was right and who was wrong. So it's very good. Is back back ten years ago, you needed to make sure you yeah. knew your stuff. And uh, bro, what you, what, I think that's the that's the big recommendation to anybody. Even now, like even if you're a verified user um, or a verified, uh, you buy from from a eBay verification. It's still for me really hard to pay a price to a new person because your store is really iffy. So well, and, that, and that's actually what happens is if you have if you have a very low rating in eBay, it doesn't mean you're a bad person or you're gonna rip people off. Yeah. But people don't trust that experience. So then no, no, no. so and and by the way, if if like once you when you pay, you pay. Like it goes out of your bank account, right? Yep, 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 yep. So then so then even if even if it works out and um it doesn't work out, I mean You'll get your money back, but it, your money's wrapped up. It's wrapped up for like sometimes close to a month before everything settles. So yeah, it, if you're it's someone really like me who has, well. has like a bankroll in the sense that I'm I'm just buying sneakers, then I don't I I love actually love the person who's never sold on eBay before because if I ended up getting the sneakers, I'm going to get them for a lot less money, mm-hmm. and um and and, and I'm going to help you know a future person because I'm going to leave them positive ratings and all that other stuff. And if it goes bad, you know, it's not money I needed. So if it's wrapped up for a month, it's just wrapped up for a month. I'll get it back. But, you know, other people can't do that. You know what I mean? Or while it's wrapped up, you're not able to buy the sneakers you could have bought from someone else because now your money's wrapped up in this sale that didn't work out. So And and, 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 and on that, and on, and pretty much on that comment, it's, um, it's very viable. The reason why we did see so what you just mentioned there is like your collateral, your your actual investment. You actually tied on to those sneakers. So what what people we what people tend to forget nowadays because there's so many new resellers coming in. There's so many young new kids coming into this game. They haven't got the bankroll like some of us would have. To, they could say, okay, I'm going to pick up this and I pick up that. I'm going to pick up this and I still and I, and if I don't if I don't if I don't want it i can still send it back and wait for my money to come back these kids will spend their entire savings to get a sneaker um or, or on that release date and then what they'll end up doing is when they do get that sneaker on that release date they need to sell it quite quickly and this is where you see that spike spike in price and that lowering price when they realize this these sneakers are sitting still with them they need to get rid of them quite quickly and yeah. this is where you get the deals especially if you're not not being ds we're talking about ds sneakers when you're looking at getting resource sneakers this is why i advise people not to spend on release not to spend pre-release is a big no you're going to spend hundreds of dollars way before way before that release um, and then on release date, it's a big no because everybody's panicking buying because of fear of missing out. Now, when when these small kids or these or these people that haven't got big bankroll pick up ten of these pairs and then can't get rid of ten of these pairs because the market's saturated, you just have to wait that two to one to two to three weeks, and they will try to offload these sneakers for the next release for the next release. And then you'd say, oh, "Okay, cool. I can get a bargain here, so I'm gonna go out and and get not get yeah. that release date sale. I'll get that sneaker when it actually settles at the right price. So right. That, that's that's important. So it's I'm, two I'm showing things, my bro. Feedback for, by the way, I don't know if you can you see my screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's two things um, about pre-release. There's FOMO, and then there's also exclusivity. Some people feel like there's going to be no chance that I can get this sneaker for retail. I really want it, so let me go in now and try to get it for whatever the price is. And hopefully, those people aren't um, skipping anything necessary to spend that money. And then there's exclusivity. Some people feel like they have a certain level of status 
yep. to where if I don't have they need it to early, keep up, they need to keep up. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't want to have it the same time everybody else has it, which is kind of the opposite effect of what I know we do sometimes. I know I do it personally. I, I still got shoes from two years ago that I have yet to undies because I don't want to have it on at the same time as somebody else. And it's not about, um, it's not about exclusivity. It's, it's more about not being like a clone in a way. Yeah. That's, that's the only way I can, I, I can I'm, rationalize I'm, it for myself. I'll put, uh, you keep talking, I'll pull up something for you guys. This is, this, this is what you mean. mean I'm going to pull up something. Yeah, I, the, I'm gonna pull it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not gonna pull it out. I'm not mentioning. I'm gonna pull it out. I'm, I'm pulling out. But but you keep talking. Keep talking. But it's it's uh, I've I didn't I didn't do that as much when I first got into the sneaker game. I can we can go back to the beginning of my YouTube um, channel and see that I only had eight pairs in the background. And then the next video was nine pairs. And the next video, it was 11 pairs. And the next video, it was 12. And, you know, you could you could see my progression from when I first started. Because I didn't, I didn't do videos when I first started. It went from probably 10 pairs, maybe 10 or 12 pairs when I first started to this monstrosity you see behind me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, like, I'm... You're gonna have to transition at some point. I can't even remember at this point. I used to be able to remember, okay, I got these three pairs that I haven't worn yet. Now I can't even remember. I think it's maybe 12 or 15 pairs in my collection that I haven't worn yet, but they're all recent releases. So I feel like I got a time a certain amount of time before I have to start putting wares on them so yeah. they'll last. I'm I'm not gonna be the guy on Instagram that's pulling out. I'm not gonna be DJ Khaled with my my Yeezy <laughs> crumbling. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you know oh, another one and still crumbling. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I refuse. I refuse to be that guy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 bro, I, it, it won't happen to me. I, I, I'm I'm so I'm I'm so I'm so like that myself because I will not. I will not wear a pair of sneakers straight off. I'm trying to find this. I might have to show it from my phone. Let me just show it from my phone because um, at the at the moment at the moment it's, I can't log on to my Instagram account. But this this is what we're talking about, and unfortunately, I have to show it from my phone. But um, when 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 you this is quite funny. This is quite funny. So like. <laughs> <laughs> and especially when it's a real popular shoe, bro. Like cool grade. That's a GR, bro. I told you, it's a GR sneaker. Watch for the restocks. Yo, wait. I guarantee <laughs> you, a lot of people have walked into a restaurant or a store or a club or whatever, and they're the fifth person in the building with cool grades on. Like I don't want to be that guy. And no. we're not gonna have the same outfits. Cause I I feel like I dress differently enough. My style is different enough to not have on something similar to somebody else. But yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to be the dude in there with the the Jordan One uh, fusions on when four other people got fusions on. You know what yeah. I'm saying? No, I understand that completely. So you go from flipping to get your watch to becoming the shoe dragon. <laughs> I, I, I wish I wish I had a, a dragon sound which I need to get for next time but all we can do is yeah I mean what at what point at what point did you realize that okay I'm I'm not I'm no longer I'm no longer doing this for a, a certain goal this is what I'm doing now like this is who I am now yeah, um, that's really hard because for the longest time, the, the concept of flipping was like out of necessity, you know? Yeah. So first it was um, like I had a goal, which my, my son was born in August 2013. So um, at the time I was flipping to, and it was, it was kind of like, it's not like we couldn't afford the hospital bills, but it was 
it would be it was just cool to tell the story like hey i'm flipping because i want to pay for the hospital bills for my son's birth so that that was what i worked towards and i was able to pay for like so then i 100 percent, 100 percent. so i got about i got about halfway for that and then um later on i, I don't know if anybody's if anybody watching this has gone through this experience but when you have when you have two kids, uh, both in a young age, my daughter was in preschool. My son is now in, in like daycare, right? Because he's an infant. My daughter's preschool was like $875 a month. My, my son's daycare was a grand. So I, was, I, was, I had almost $1,900 a month wrapped up in childcare. That is expensive, bro. That is really expensive. Yeah. But- and it's actually more expensive depending on where you live. So, yeah. I mean, like if someone from New York or Connecticut watches this, they're going to be like, wow, that's cheap. That's a bargain. Because it probably costs them Bro, like three grand a month to do that stuff. You know what? You wow. know what? It's, 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 it's it, like, I would, I, we, we had talked, we talked to, what did we say this in episode one or episode two? One or two. But in episode one, we said reselling is, is sometimes, uh, we, we, we don't agree, well, myself and Q don't agree with reselling to pick up hundreds of thousands of pairs of sneakers just to kind of get a profit margin of it. But when, when you flip sneakers to support, and you, when you flip sneakers to support your 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 payment of other sneakers, like you pick up three pairs and have one for free, uh, or because you're a kid, or when, you, when what you've just done is pick up V and DS, remod them. And let's not get this let's 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 not get this twisted because picking up a V and DS sneaker that was left there, you could have left it there, but you actually brought it back to life and actually gave it a new home. That's that's a totally different. That's totally different in the perspective of retailing yeah. anyway. But when when you when you did that and actually supported your your family, that's amazing. That and it, and, and like that that is a hustle. It's supporting your family is the ultimate goal. That's the ultimate hustle. See what I'm saying? Yeah. That is what, what we should be doing. That hundred percent. Like um, and that that is that's, that's something to be celebrated. All hands on every time. If you can do that and you can kind of support your family, it's amazing. Yeah, and and I'm I wasn't taking a sneaker from somebody. No, you know what I mean? Exactly. Anybody you, could you have literally resurrected it for me. Although my technique, the technique I use, in in a sense, like you would have to use the exact same technique to beat me. You know well, what I mean? Let's let's. I don't I don't want to get into that part. Um selfishly. I want that to be <laughs> He wants to be a secret. <laughs> secret's been kept. He, he's like he's like, Cam, don't tell him the secrets. We, I need to don't. know this. I need to get these sneakers. I need to we make sure I get these sneakers. Up. Don't give it to everybody. Just leave it between us. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That's one thing. That's one thing that, that y'all are not gonna be privy to. Y'all gonna have to go to Cam personally and get that. No, that's from true dog mentality there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have to go to Cam and get that from him. If he want to let no. you know that part of it, see, he can. As let you can you see, know. Cam, Cam's Instagram is there, guys. If you want, if you want, if you want to, uh, if you want to go and talk to the bro, go talk to the bro. He's up there. <laughs> yeah, and look, we don't want to put we don't want to put no added pressure or or no no added no. Um, people in your life, but you control your side of it. You know, I don't want to, I don't, nah, we're not going to do that. We're not no, going to no. do that. But we no. do want, uh, if if you're so gracious enough to allow us a peek at some of your Instagram, or not Instagram, I'm sorry, some of your eBay sniping methods. I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say one, I'm going to say one thing. I, I did, I did notice, Cam, but like, but I like the, the whole, the whole story base. And I know you, I've known you for about roughly a year and a half now. Um, and I can say, like, hands down, one of the most awesome people out there. This is what we call you Gandalf. We call you the historian. We call you the, you know, I, 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 I always, always come and talk to you if I, if I need anything or if I need your advice. And we, like, obviously, me and you do on Straight to the Top, we do our podcast, on oh, our podcast, but live talking about customs. It is, and it's, and like, I'm not going to lie, yesterday probably was, was Saturday for anybody that's watching this, was the best day of my life in a in a little while ever since ever since what happened to me last year in terms of my house getting flooded and stuff but yesterday i felt really alive just because i'd cut i picked up obviously picked up a couple of pairs for myself and for some of people but doing that live yesterday 
with you and on Instagram was phenomenal. It yeah. kind of gave me this extra energy. It was like, yo, I like this. I want to do more of this. And it was great because, bro, I mean, maybe I was delirious because I didn't, I didn't have enough sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and you told me off last night for not going to sleep. <laughs> but, 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 the, but the thing is, like, I've noticed one thing, like, you, that you've gone from being young, like just just a breakdown of it, being young um, and seeing sneakers and coming back to it and supporting supporting to get sneakers, and then then the, the flip side is get, trying to get um, trying to get watched. So you flip some sneakers from VNDS, then you grew into that. Now did you support your family, and now you're still using that um, habit of bringing VNDSs, bring and let's yeah. just say some of these some of these VNDSs that you pick up are dead somebody's like somebody would throw these away and you bring them back to life you bring them back to life and then you've you've restored them and that supports your other sneaker habit which is picking sneakers for yourself and even then you still get them for quite cheap so that in itself is a phenomenal journey and by the way by the way i can't can't not show these you made you made me pick up one of my most favorite sneakers last year a grail of mine. <laughs> yeah. The Belairs, bro. The yeah. Bel- like, bro. And you know, you know me, you know me, and you know a Q. We love fives. We love fives. Oh. So this, this is a beautiful, beautiful sneaker, bro. And that, that's all courtesy of you, of what we did last year. Yeah. What we did last year. It was, uh, it was amazing. It was amazing. So all, this is all credit to you. And um, this is why we wanted you to be the first guest on this podcast because it was it's you have helped a lot of people out, bro. You have I a would lot not. Of, a lot. I would not own this shoe if it wasn't for Shinron and Shoe Dragon. <laughs> you bless me. I I finally I finally got all the Dragon Balls, and Shinron came, and I asked for the Jordan Five Three Lab, and Shinron blessed me. And 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 do you know what? I'm gonna say one say one thing. Like doing this, doing the shoot, uh, doing the um, customs talk on Saturday morning, and I'm gonna get. I'm gonna say credit to you for getting up on a Saturday morning at eight o'clock in the morning, bro. Because like hands down, nobody yeah, else would do that. Starting alive at eight. I'm not getting up at eight. <laughs> starting alive at eight, exactly. <laughs> but like for, for for you for for that the whole concept of. You drive me forward. Like everybody I known in in ever since I got on Instagram on YouTube, you drive me forward. You one of you E Q are the guys that drive me forward. And I'm just saying that, that those those Belairs are there. They they that's that's probably a cleanup job. I have three sneakers. You give me a challenge to do. Um, one of them is the, the All Star Chameleons. Um, one the other one is um, the Gatorade sixes. I need those green Gatorade sixes to be done yeah, pretty soon. Beautiful. I actually got, I actually did get a suede brush. I'm gonna try and talk to you for through that um after this or during the week. But there's there, there's other ones that you've literally given me to, to, to like go and sort this out. And it's 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 about building that knowledge base and building that kind of you know assistance assistance of resurrecting sneakers. Yeah. Um, and I'm growing, and bro, we've got other people outside the spectrum, like, like John uh, Hyperfox Kicks, um, and Chris is dope, bro. Like it's 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 yeah. phenomenal, and it I does. Mean, it, it translates like in so many different aspects of life. So if if you're someone who knows everything to, you need to know about building a house, right? Would you go out and buy a like someone? Would you have someone build a house for you, or would you go buy a no, foreclosure? No knowing that you can turn that house into a brand spanking new house and you, you yep. essentially get a ton more for your value with sweat equity, right? If you exactly. know how to work on cars and you can actually install new components like upwards to an engine and do electrical work, would you go out and buy a brand new car or would you go out and buy an no. old car knowing that you could turn it into a brand new car? So exactly. that's all we're doing, dude, is where and- we see sneakers in a different way than someone who walks into a shoe <laughs> store or goes to a sneakers app like we see sneakers as projects and we, we, we envision what they will look like. We, we when, look past what they do look like. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Um, and that, that's like what I do. I mean, I, and it, what it does is it allows you to cop, you know, at a third or, or even sometimes a fourth of the price mm-hmm. of the sneaker. Yes. And the, the materials that you're using to bring them back to life are negligible, you know, and, and really bro, I'm going to, 
I'm gonna say one thing is like well, I've already said on 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 Instagram what I want to do. My what my one of my achievements is for the end of this year. I'm not gonna say it on here, but it will be a surprise for here. But um, I what one of the things like that 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 for me is the reason you are the reason for that to happen because if I wasn't doing what I was doing with you on Instagram, I would not be aspiring to do what I'm gonna do this year. Yeah. Um, and off the back of that, if I do accomplish what I'm going to want to do this year, then one of the first sneakers I will put together is for you as a gift to you to say thank you, bro. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, and you know it's going to be a one silhouette as well. <laughs> nice. And you know well, it's going to have some orange I can't in wait. It. I, really, I mean, I, that would be amazing. That would be absolutely amazing. I would, I would feel completely privileged to rock a one of one made by a friend and you know <laughs> bro in, in a it, 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 it bro it's 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 because um it's, the, it's because of love and respect like I, I wouldn't be doing half the things without you guys and, and that that's well, that's a massive versa. message yeah. I, I can tell you that i feel more inspired because of instagram and i don't mean that in like some cheesy like teeny bopper kind of way but i don't i don't get to walk out my front door and go to my other sneaker friend my other sneakerhead friend's house and like talk about sneakers like i don't i don't really know anybody um locally that's like me into sneakers i have friends that like sneakers and i help them buy sneakers but their collections are you know like 15 <laughs> shoes deep you know what i mean and instagram and allowed say, me to connect with people like you oh, yeah. where it's like we're 100 percent like-minded yeah. um and, and that inspires say, a lot of the purchases too you know? i'm gonna say and, and ch- shout out to the bro ego souls um, we'll, ha- we'll be coming on soon, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. But he he, he put a reel together um, yesterday um, for for today. Yeah. Um, oh, that reel. And dope, th- yo, I, I I watched that. I watched that reel seven or eight times. So if you if you don't if you don't follow Egot Souls, go follow Egot Souls. If you don't follow Straight to the Though, go and check that reel out. It emphasised everything that we achieved last year as a group of people. It emphasised. Bro, there's no one person in the same state. There's no one person in the same global location, except for maybe like even you and Q aren't in the same state. Technically, so, yeah, you're right. Yeah, the, it was funny yeah. because I'm really close to um, to Polar, like really close. Yeah. Okay. But, but like we we, we had we we had we had uh, we had uh, Brendan who pulled pulled out South Africa. We had E, e who pulled out East Africa, which is my hometown, Darius Lund, Tanzania. Um, he pulled out from UK. We pulled out Glasgow. We pulled out Atlanta. We pulled out bro from where you are. It will, it just showed the connections. If you do if you do Instagram right and if you do social media right, that's the connections you can actually achieve. And it's beautiful yeah. because basically we we have no animosity to each other. We just come on, we talk, we we discuss, we break it down, and it's beautiful and it's always positive. It's always like, yo, how can I inspire you and how you can inspire me? And it's it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It's dope. Yeah. Hands down. It is, it is dope. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Like, when I when I started in this in the sneaker community. It was very lonely for me. Um, it was me and my wife who does not <laughs> really care as much as I do. She she has a passion for it be, because I have a passion for it, and we support right. each other that way. But then there is my brother King Rod, Mister A Beautiful Thing, <laughs> and uh, then, it, it, uh, this is this is this is weird. This is this is King Rod. Yeah. <laughs> and so and then I met Retro Rick and uh he introduced me to a, a the other side of the sneaker game and then I started to meet people because my knowledge base went up and people started looking to me for information on cops and can you help me get these and that's what really turned me into the Q that I am now, where at first I was just Q rocker and now I'm 808 kicks. Like people walk up to me and, hey, you 808. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm actually being recognized in the malls and in the stores and stuff like that. So, Oh, bro. 
it's, bro, it's, yeah, 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 you, 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 so, you, so, <laughs> I know. It's, 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 hold on, it's, 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 Cam, you will get recognized one day and you will feel how awkward it's not awkward. Like, I, I remember it's happened to me, it's happened to me when we went to the design museum. Somebody came up to me and said, I know you, you're, you're in Love Kicks Customs. I was like, yeah, <laughs> you, do, yeah. Man, you, all, like, you almost want to say no. You almost want to deny it. Like, no, no, no. I, I mean, I kind of feel like that will never happen. Um, it will. I, I don't will. feel. I don't feel popular. It, I don't feel popular on. I feel included. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. But I don't. I don't feel popular yeah. because Instagram. the thing. The thing is, bro. Yeah. We look up. We look up to you because you have that. You have that knowledge. You have any any time. Any time. Like who who would who would have thought what we were discussing yesterday on on the live when you're talking about Yeezy ones having the soul of um, not the, the not Jordan Fries, but you were talking about the like here soul. Nah, yeah, exactly. So who would know that? Like who who would come and say, no, actually, it's not. It's not. It's that. He's like, bro, because you're the historian. You are the one with the knowledge and. This is why it's it, you are that pillar that kind of combines us, and you, we just always come to you. But you will get recognized. Trust me, you will get recognized think, because okay. you are going to blow up. <laughs> I, think, I think you haven't been recognized yet because you don't float through the sneaker community as much as we may do going to retail stores and going to conventions and, and community events and stuff like that. Yeah. The sooner you go to a sneaker event. Meaning, whether it's a sneaker con or maybe a, a big retail release, somebody is going to know you. They may not say it, they may not say it at all, or they may not say it right away. Yeah. Because when I was recognized, I was in line behind the guy. And I noticed he kept, this was for the cool gray 11s. He, kept, <laughs> he would look back and he would say a little, oh, this is bullshit. Cause we were, we were standing in line waiting on our uh, raffle W pairs. Right. And they, they, it was just a, a bad release at, um, I ain't even going to say the store, but <laughs> it was a bad release. And so people that were behind us in line were getting their pairs, even though we were the second and third person. And um, he kept looking at me and I told the chick, at the rear, I said, "Y'all got y'all got rocker back there. Y'all got Quentin rocker back there." Like, nah, we ain't we ain't got to it yet, or something like that. And so maybe five minutes later, he say, "Hey, you got a YouTube channel, right?" <laughs> and, like, and, oh shit, here and, we go. And you, and you and you wanted to say, and you wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> Because that was only maybe my third or fourth time being recognized outside of a community of people. Like when I go to a RetroCon, I kind of expect people to recognize me because it's a it's a group, it's a conglomerate. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, cool. All right, cool, cool, cool. This is a question. This is a, this is a little bit of a question for me. Would you find it disrespectful if you went to RetroCon and nobody recognized you and somebody else recognized you on the street? <laughs> no. No, I wouldn't I wouldn't because I'm I'm humble at heart. So I always have the feeling that nobody knows me. You know, I move so low key. I don't have you know, 50,000 followers. I don't have uh, 20,000 subs on YouTube. So it's like, uh, nobody knows me like that. And when it started happening to me, oh, 808, and people run up to me and they want to have conversation with me. And they, I feel like they're actually trying to get to know me on a personal level. I appreciate it so much more because I have a humble personality. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not out here trying to be the man so to speak no, no. no like no, some no, no, some no. people some people they shun the uh the fact that they're being noticed or they try to downplay somebody because oh i i don't know who you are so you ain't worth my time like i yeah. I could never be that type of person no no i mean i'm i'm actually i'm I'm like you i mean i'm i'm the first person if someone says hey i need help with getting a sneaker or something like that i'm that's the whole point of the community. It's yeah, not to shun anybody. And it's, it, to, it, it's to be available, you know, to share your yeah. experience, share your knowledge. Exactly. Like, exactly. Um, and then it's, it's a personality type. Like, 
I know, I know for a fact that TJ and I share this where I've always had the personality type that I will trust you immediately. And then you have to have the, you have to, you have to work towards keeping it. Um, oh, yeah, but yeah. I'm not the personality type where you have to earn it. So no. when I meet people, um, I just kind of rely on my instincts, my first impressions, and maybe I'm and, gullible, and, but, you know. but no, bro, you're, you're, my, 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 my missus tells me that too all the time. She's like, um, you, you're too trusting. You're too, you're too like, she, she's very, she's very, um, I, I would say I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of an ever extra, extrovert, which I will, I will just, if I, if I know you, I'm like, yo, what's, let's call, cool, let's chill, let's do. And, and my, my instant reaction is to kind of, oh yeah, cool. Let's, let's talk. And, and like, like you said, me, me, me and you can, I'll probably even E, uh, I mean, if E and Q are the same, like we'll get to know, we you're like, yo, okay, cool. Let's, let's talk, let's vibe. And then like my full trust will be in you until you lose that trust. And when you lose that trust, it's really hard to get that back. Um, and because automatically it for, for my, for my miss, for my girlfriend, it's a bit different. She has all her walls up. And then you have to break them down and then she'll be comfortable with you. But for me, there is no walls. And the, what, as soon as you do something wrong, all the walls go up. And now yeah. you're like, nah. Yeah, yeah. you nah. blocked off. You completely blocked off. <laughs> yeah. From the first sign, the first sign of you trying to do something wrong or something bad, in my opinion, is like uh, halfway. And I'm looking over the wall, but the, uh, you're gone. That's yeah, awesome. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always I always describe myself, and this this applies at work too. But I always describe myself as the nicest, mean person you've ever met. Yes, it's oh, like all yeah. you gotta do is all you gotta do is cross that line, and you'll you'll meet a person that you never knew existed. Based yeah, on don't, can, act before don't be can, a line stepper. I, I, are you are you sure you you're not a brother, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I'm exactly the same way. <laughs> I will I, I I will go above and beyond. To literally make your life uh, a hell if you do something bad to me, like I'm not not intentionally. It, it, it's it will be like you're gone. But if you keep pushing the barriers, if you keep coming at me in a certain way, then yeah, I have to address it. I have to address it. But but it's ne- it's never got to it's never got to that point. But yeah, I've it, bro, it is it is, it is, it is life. This is what happens when you cross trusting reliable people. They will basically make your life a hell if you keep pushing them. Um, and that and that's one adv- one word of advice: don't take our our, our kindness as a weakness because it is, it's not. A, Please but, don't. But 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 going back going back to going back to the, the you saying Q like um that that incident where somebody you saw saw, saw you in the line. I think Rick, Scott Scott came to me to give me his um you you uh, what does he call it unite what unite freeze, and um, because he wanted me to do a customs for him. So we, we I was like, oh Scott, you're here, um let's go and get something to eat. Um don't worry, uh, we, we went we went to we went to this uh, in Str- Stratford. Stratford is like East London kind of thing where I work, and uh, so we basically went there to actually get some some wagon mamas to eat. I was walking there, and I normally talk. I, I'm, I'm a very receptive person on online, and so 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 if so if you message me, I'll message you back, and we'll have, we'll break it down vibe. And if you need any help, I'll give you the help advice. Um, and then somebody I he did somebody that um I didn't re- haven't got a face is literally they post stuff without showing their face, and he just said, "Oh, you're you're Love Kiss Customs, aren't you?" And I turned around and said. Yeah, but how do, how do I know? Oh, I I'm 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 so and so. So sneaks sneakers and charms, um, because he does his charms. I said, oh, bro, I know you. I talk to you. It was it was just it was really like, uh, are you? And then and I was like, yo, this is Scott. This comes to Mister Simpson because at that time Scott didn't show his face. It's like this is Scott. Oh, right, we talk as well. It's like yeah, it's just it's just, it's just weird. It's like yeah. it's, you know when you're walking and you just instantly somebody. Doesn't even say your name. Says says what you're doing, and you, and he takes you back. Like, are you? What? You see what I'm saying? It's like it's weird. Yeah. It's totally, it's totally weird. But you will yeah. get recognized, bro. You will get recognized one day, and you'll like, and you then will. you feel like, oh, I can break it down with you now. <laughs> It'll be one person. It'll be one person, and they'll they'll look at you. When they look at you, look down at what they have on feet, and you'll think to yourself, here it comes. <laughs> this person, this person knows me. If you if you see someone wearing a fresh pair of J's, 
<laughs> more more so probably some sought after stuff, something that's got a high resale, something that's hard to get, or something that's older, some Jordan ones or dunks or something like that. I believe that's going to be the first person to recognize you. Yeah. As, as as long as they don't say. I got one question for you. <laughs> 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 well, well, if, 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 can, can, if you did, if you did your custom, uh, you, I, I, you, like, like, we'll, like, you know, we we only got probably like 20, 20 30 minutes left. So if, if you did your customs, and especially the six denim six customs you have done, you got to show them today. You got to show them today because if you if you wore those, somebody will say in a nice way, "Yo, what are those? I want those." <laughs> All right, you guys want to see the six customs? Here we go, go. Let's go on, bro. Here we go. Because we, go. we got two things you're going to show us. You're going to show us your little eBay little venture into that yeah. pothole, dive into that pothole, and then we're going to see some very, very beautiful, beautiful customs. Look at those. Yeah, Look and also at those. laced through the side of the shoe, which I thought was pretty cool. And that so it's crazy. It's an asymmetrical yeah. paint guy. These are the denims. So these are the Jordan 6 denims. And then I bleached them first so you could still see. And I left the – if any anybody knows us, like one of the things we like to do is we like to leave remnants of the original shoe. So in this case, I left the white. I left it looking like it's bleached jean on purpose. So, but – And it's you, got, you got kind of like an off-white dunk lacing system going yeah. on with those. Yeah. That's crazy. Looks, yeah, but, I mean, it, it was available. I didn't have to poke holes or anything. And actually, the reason why I did it was because the laces were too long but I wanted to uh, use them. So then I just thought, what can I do with the laces to make them shorter? And that was one of the things I thought of. See, so. see, I, I, I feel, I feel if, if uh, unfortunately, RIP to Virgil Abloh and sad to see him go, but um, if, if he was going to design a Jordan, going to put his hands on a Jordan 6, I, th I think what he would have done would, I keep coming out, hold on two seconds. Uh, so what he would have done would, it would have been to, you see those eye, uh, less lace, lace, uh, on on the actual medial uh, on the toe on the six, he might have actually done what he did with the dunks with those sixes to actually invert to put some kind of threading through that to make it actually what you just basically done is to thread it through those um, lace lace lower lace um, panels. So that that's pretty, I think I, that could have been one of his inspirations. But he, but the thing is, we don't know how Virgin did work, so he, that that would have been kind of phenomenal to see. And you know what? It, it's it's sad that he's gone because. Even though, even though I'm not, I, I, I like, I'm not a, um, I'm not a person that will pick up off whites. I uh, like, I haven't picked up any of the Jordan off whites. Um, my girlfriend's have to, obviously has got the off white fours because she wants it, but for me personally, I've not got an off white in my collection. Um, but it doesn't mean I don't respect. It doesn't. It doesn't mean I'm not respectful for what for what he's actually put together or or his design aspects because it's still like a work of art in 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 theory to to, to, to distress it to come back and put different aspects to it and it's still his idea and take on on that design and that aspect of that sneaker not not to my taste but a lot of people love it and a lot of people want it but it's very nice to see and it would be it would have been good to see him do maybe a three or a six or a seven or a or a or a eight. Yeah. Um, or a fourteen. I kind of feel like we're still gonna see them because I, I feel like he I, probably I, had approval over it, but I don't think that he was doing the designs. Yeah, I, he I, definitely I, has a team. It's a team yeah. effort. But but I I I heard um, something really interesting uh, the other day. Um, well, probably um, well, it's Saturday. Um, that that the Louis Vuitton Off White Nike Air Force One is the last Off White they're ever gonna release. I I I think I think you might get a statement from Nike confirming that I don't think we're going to get the bread fours. I don't think we're going to get the um, what do you call it the military blue no. or white fours. I don't think we're going to get anything else. I, I I truly believe they are going to retire the off white brand um, after this Louis Vuitton release. Um, but if, if, Louis, okay. if Louis Vuitton if Louis Vuitton do what Louis Vuitton's going to do with Virgil Abloh separately, that's that's a different matter. But I don't think we're going to see a lot of Nikes come out. Uh, mm. with off, yeah. off I mean, I, you never know i mean at the end of the day people are not doing this for love they're doing it for capitalism so yeah exactly exactly you know what i mean but for the time wh whoever the now whoever now is running off white because it's, it's an actual label it's a brand you know it's not going to go away yeah. 
yep, yep, yep. Know, they want to do a night collaboration then they're going to do a night, but, night collaboration so but 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 the, 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 the problem now becomes is the problem is um it's no long anything going forwards if it wasn't in his original plan is not a virgil inspired off white it, it, you you kind of it kind of goes away from the off white brand to somebody else's ideas and aspirations and designs rather than Virgil's because it was always Virgil's kind of thought process to for him to do the two for him to do the four for him to do um, the ones that was his inspiration that was his brainchild so that it's from from there to now okay cool they can replicate that those features on different on the same silhouettes but if you didn't touch the six and it's still called off white six but it's nothing to do with virgil it's to do with whoever's taking that mantle on from virgil so you can't really call it a virgil inspired off white it's still part of the off white brand but will it have the same impact knowing that virgil's not done it um, at the end of the day to me it's it's about the i like i like stories don't get me wrong but if i if i like an off white I'll buy it. If I don't like it, yeah, I yeah. won't buy it. I mean, who's the designer between Alma and Manier? Who's that? Who's that guy? Like, what's his name? James we... Whitner. Yeah. Or is it you... James Whitner? That's what I'm saying. Do you like? <laughs> but I'm telling you, like, you may know that Q, and maybe you do that know that too, TJ. I didn't know that, but I would 100% buy an Alma Manier three because I think they're dope. So, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I mean, at the but end of the day, cool. like, I get the whole Virgil thing. And, of course, you know, Virgil yeah, rest in peace. It's, it's James Whitney. But, but it's like, James if you like a shoe, buy a shoe. If you don't, don't. I mean, people are still, like, fucking going crazy over the Travis Scotts. And he's an asshole. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, like, technically, they, the shoes should be canceled along with him. But they're not. Nah. The controversy, I think the controversy adds to the hype. Maybe. I, I, I and um and go, and going like let's 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 kind of be really really um honest here like they they, they this year's we didn't see any with this year we only we've seen the union twos we've seen j balvin twos we say we're seeing um Amma Manier twos um, there's no real j except for j balvin there's no real like um celebrity that's taken there's no Travis that can rely on at this moment because it's putting put on ice. There's no Virgil because Virgil, fortunately, rest in salt, rest in peace, uh, rest in peace for Virgil, but he's passed away. So, um, when when we when we look when we're looking at what's happening currently in this state of play, like we, I think we're seeing Jordan and Nike push DJ Khaled a bit more. So he's been like, if you if you've seen over the last couple of months, even where he was do, he was always doing that still, 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 right. But now you're seeing more engagement with Jordan Brand with 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 with, um, with Khaled. Now you're seeing it on social media. Now you're seeing him with Kanye West. Now you're seeing Kanye West post stuff with Jordan. So there is there is replacements. There, it, unfortunately, to say that, but there is replacements. It's, it, it feels like the step up is now DJ Khaled. The step up is now getting that hype behind Jordan Brand and and Kanye. Um, the, and, and and it's always and if it wasn't there, it would be somebody. Else. In that place because there's always going to be the next step up the next person yeah. the next person that comes in um so yeah i feel that's what's happening and that whole situation we saw this weekend with kanye posting that jordan brand i think that's an absolute troll unless what i said a year ago is true which he's actually going to do a re-collaboration with nike with his yeezy brand and with the yeezy one with the 350s and that's the only way i can see that ever, ever happening but we'll see um but I, i'd say Let's go and deep dive into your eBay history. <laughs> yeah. If, if and, we can and, be great, and, and, exactly, and, and if we can be great, and, and I'm telling you, it's it's no longer a shoe dog. It, it is literally going to be <laughs> steals and deals, steals and deals, steals and deals <laughs> with Kevdorf. <laughs> I want to take you back to 2020. You know, uh, I'll work our way up. How about that? Yeah. Uh, 2020. <laughs> uh, at the at the end of at, at the end of the the, the history uh, at the end of your history, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you three questions. One of it one one of them is going to be uh, what is the best ever deal you got? What's the best sneaker uh, cop you got? And what is the worst worst deal you actually walked away from? So three questions for you, Cam. Okay, think about three it. questions again. So what's the best what's the best um what's the kind of best uh flip? Like in terms of you got this this much and you flipped for this much, but 
the cheapest and the best flip. That's number one. Number well, two. I actually already already told it. It was the fifty dollar ninety nine Jordan Five Metallics. Okay, so you got two questions. Five hundred. One thousand percent profit. One thousand percent profit. Jeez. <laughs> so uh, the next the next question would would have to be after after you think about these two questions is um, after we go through deep dive through a little bit of your eBay history is to work out what the what your best best cop is in terms of VNDS um, in terms of what you what you sit there out of all the all the time you've been doing this is I can't believe. I got this pair, um, and wow, I didn't believe the price point. And then number two is, um, what's the worst one? Like literally, oh, oh shit! <laughs> like, <a>, oh shit! <laughs> oh, it's a oh shit moment. Like, <laughs> 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 All right, cool. Go, on, Cam. Okay, take it so, away. So, um, of course, it's old enough where the pictures are gone. But do you know do you know what these are? Yes. All right. So do you know what these are, TJ? Yep. Wings flat. Yeah. 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 All right. So you can, you can pull up the picture. You can pull this yeah. up for um for so anybody that's Jordan watching. On wings. It is. Yo. Right here. I just saw. I can't remember who it was. Somebody was wearing the Jordan Twelve wings. That had that same style. Yeah, yeah. The Jordan Twelve Wings is is, is something that, that needs to be retro. That is so fucking dope, right there. So this this shoe right here is it? Is it the the oh the wing the what I'm thinking of, Is it the black panel you scratch away and it, it comes through with that like kind of um, the Jordan Twelve Wings? I mean that 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 comes through with the, the patterning. I mean, let me just Google it. I'm, I'm I'm I might be getting my sort of my my well, sort of I, mixed up here. The twelves so, actually have like a wing graphic on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so one fifteen. One fifteen. And was the quality VNDS? Yes. Yeah. yeah OG so, all too. Uh, is it? Is it? Is it? All dust bag. Right, right, um, right. That's the right yeah. one. So, 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 see the rustic. That little rustic thing comes through once you yeah. once you actually scratch those your hands off. Yeah, exactly. they need to be retro. That they need to be retro those wings. Right, and then of course these are shoes I flipped. Like I, I bought a pair. This is before they re released, but I bought a pair of Raging Bull Red Suede. I had to do a re dye, and I sold them for two fifty. Um, these homage to, to homes are actually still outside of my garage. I need to restore them. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Cam, cam, cam. Mm-hmm. Wind it back. Eighty eight dollars. That's eleven and a half too. My <laughs> okay. Well, I'll restore them for you. All right, they're still in my garage. Um, let's see here. Oh, these are cool. So, do you, if you guys know this, um, there, there's, two, there's, this is back when the Jordan or the LeBron Eleven release came out, which I believe is like 2014, 2013, 2014. Um, so they had a they had a gumbo version of the shoes to represent the All Star Game. So there's a gumbo KD six. And there's a gumbo LeBron 11. I got the gumbo KD6s for 40 bucks. Um, Sports Illustrated. So this is a Star is Born. Yeah, $51. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jordan 1 Joker, if you know the mids, 85. Yeah. 85? Yeah, they're dope too. Um, oh, this was a this was a cool one. I actually got the entire pack. And I, for two hundred bucks, the the Jordan One. <laughs> How much it's, that retail? It's not from? a DMP. It was um. It was actually the um. Uh, old school, new school, the count the the defining moments pack is what it's called. So that's what the DMP stands for. So I got that a whole pack for two hundred with box, which I flipped. Hmm. All right, let's, let's go back. All right, we're working our way back from two thousand. Or from uh, 2020. So we're going from the bottom up. Oh, there's a good one. Can't wait to get to those. All right. So from there, I got the... I actually flipped these. Do you see this? I got a pair of PSG 5s, 11 and a half for 80. Bro, bro, bro. I didn't know you. I didn't know you then. This is January can, 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 Who's got a time machine? Who's got a time machine? I need to go back. I need to, uh, first of all, I need to go back and get up a Rito. But I need to go back and see you. <laughs> <laughs> right. By the way, okay, and check this out. I got the the Jordan One Laser 30th Anniversaries for thirty five dollars. Thirty. 
<laughs> uh, Jordan Five Quad Fifty Fours. I finally sold these. It took a long time to sell them because they're uh, they're kind of like a you know a collector shoe as opposed to a rocked everyday shoe. The black and uh, green. No, the white. The white with the neon highlights. They're the yeah yeah yeah. Quad yeah. Fifty Four mm-hmm. Jordan. The, the, the first the original first Jordan release. 5, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah yeah. The original release ninety six dollars. Wow. Um, don't really care about AJKOs. Um, oh, Jordan One Mid Hulks. If you guys know those, I, they're yeah, like I've one seen, of my favorite mids. I've, I've, I've seen this. Uh, they sell for about one fifty. I picked them up for thirty. Um, you ready for this one? Dave White size eleven, forty seven dollars. I will be buying that shoe. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The reason why they're forty seven is because there's heel drag, and I had to repaint the shoe. Yeah, that shoe this, for forty seven bucks. Yep. This year, forty-seven. Yeah. Yay. Um, Yay. I didn't. These ended up being fake. Oh yeah, I remember you told us about those. Yeah. Uh, Space jams. Those ended up being fake. Hmm. Um. Two thousand. Those two. The, oh, I, these are in my collection. I have uh, two thousand sixteen Space jams for seventy. Wow. Those are up in my closet. Wow. Um, Easy butters, which I ended up, I ended up, um, I either sold them or traded them. I can't remember, but I paid one fifty for for easy butters and mint condition. Um, oh, there we go. Check it out. Do the right things, metallic. And they were, they weren't beat, by the way. They were just, they just needed to be remolded. Like Sixty bucks. Sixty bucks. It's a beautiful thing. Look, and, and this, and then you know what? This is the uh, this is the polar opposite of reselling. This is the polar opposite of Diaz. This is the, if if you want to take anybody wants to take inspiration off this, they should because there is deals. I, I don't think I don't think the I don't think the state of play in, in the UK is the same as in the states. Um, but there is deals and steals to be had in VNDS. If you don't mind wearing somebody else's sneaker that they probably drop for two or three times at the most sometimes. Yeah. It's worth there's worth some, some of the some of these are like there. restores though. Like like these yeah. lands mountains I've never gotten to. They're in my garage. Um they need to be like they actually need to be repainted. Then they needed to be repainted black and then you need to remove the black to then recreate the concept of them because yeah the even the paint on them is is bad. Like the underpaint is bad. All mm. right guys. What do you think of this one? Is that one fourteen? That is one fourteen. For two thousand one We get all the sounds out here. One hundred and fourteen dollars <laughs> for a pair of bread OGs. Yo, and, and, and let's and, and, and let's just, just stop, say, let's just let's say this. Stop sharing my screen for a second. That's. This shoe. Yep. This shoe right here. I'm holding it. You can't touch Cam. <laughs> $114. I'm holding it in my hand right now. $114. I'm, I have rocked these shoes more than once. So, yeah. You got to, man. You got I love to. Oh, I love my God. If y'all don't own I'm 2001s, just... you need to. Wait, man. We're, 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 not, we're not doing this no more. We're not doing this no more. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not done though. I'm not done. How about a pair of 2001 Royals for ninety dollars? Cam, Cam, you and 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 I, t- and I told you guys. I told you guys. Forget, forget the how. Forget the how. Forget the the shoe dog how. It, it, we need a dragon for Cam. For do you, Cam. Do you, you it may it may not be as hard to believe for you, but that's your eBay history is hard to fathom. That's why. You are a Camdolf. That's why <laughs> you are Shinron the Shoe Dragon. Like, because, the, bro, ain't nobody 100%. got a history. Anybody that has a history like that probably doesn't do what you do with the shoes. But the fact that you your collection is so stupid based on the way you cop yeah. And the steel yep. that you find and, and the filters that you have and everything that, that makes up your eBay history, 
it's ridiculous, bro. I ain't never seen nothing like that before. And and yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys, we're not even touching the surface mm. of what Cam's accomplished in his sneaker career at this moment in time. If 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 Cam was to retire at this moment port a moment in time. I would see I he's probably the king of what he does at this moment in time. I'm not even joking. I I I'm not I'm not because he's not because he's the bro. I'm legitimately telling you, I've not seen anybody do it better than Cam in my life. Y'all see what's in his background. Y'all see it. No. Y'all see on on either <laughs> side. On one side, you got multiples that I, I mean a lot of us won't own. But then on the other side, you got a shoe that. You probably got a one in a hundred, two hundred thousand chance of even and, getting and, close to. And and, yeah. and we we st- we we started this conversation about talking about your favorite color orange and the fact that it's really, 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 really limited. So, how many shattered backboard one point zeros have you touched in your life, bro? How many shattered backboard one point zeros? Two. Yep. Two. Right. Right. So Two. how and how how and how cheap were they? I paid. Actually, I could. I'll show them to you because they're in here. <laughs> we get, we get to it. I think I bought them in 2020. Um, and you're you're the one you're the only one I could say that has pretty much got old bread colorways. Yeah, all, I, 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 I did sell my 2009s. I don't have 94s. And I don't have 85s. Um, so Barons for 150, that's pretty good. That was great. Um, <laughs> oh, Letterman's Letterman's for 48. What? Yep, 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 yep. If you don't know what the Letterman's look like, there is what was it orange? Was it orange? I it's thought? like an it's like a red orange. And oh, really? Forty eight, kind of bro. And a, yeah, and a metallic navy blue. You can't even find that shoe. I love it. Such a dope shoe. Very underrated. Oh, um, the Jordan two of the of the Dunk. You know, like are you, are you guys familiar with the the um, Jordan pack Dunk, where they came out with a range of Dunks and like yeah, two thousand the J pack, the J pack. So I have the twos, the J Pack twos, and I paid thirty four dollars for them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let, 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 let's 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 wind this back. Can <laughs> touch <laughs> 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 All right. Can touch <laughs> All right, here we go. We're gonna get into some crazy stuff here. Um, <laughs> I got, I got these. Actually, that's the shoe, TJ. This is the mistake shoe. The thirty-eight oh. dollars. That's what this is. Well, well, well is, 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 oh god, go you, you, you need to, you need to, you need to tell us a story about that quickly before. All right, before so, we move on. so white flips. If you see them, they're like, like perfect, right? So I, I bought these for thirty-eight. The midsoles were all cracked. The paint was bad. Um, the heel tab was yellow. The the black was gone. The silver was gone. So what I did was I, I bought these shoes and I repainted them and they were perfect. They looked just like this. And I only yep. have one of them now because I saw a YouTube video where a person used Flex Seal but with a paintbrush, like out of a paint can, to, to <laughs> seal the shoe. And I was thinking like, oh my God, that's genius. Like the shoe will look perfect forever because it's got Flex Seal on it. So I went into my garage and I had clear Flex Seal, but I had it in a spray paint can. And I went out to go and I went to go spray the other shoe and uh, so yeah don't do that because you can't control how the spray comes out of the can <laughs> and it just like it like caked up on the shoe like in the back and it caked up on the shoe and it was like and it was and it was sticky i'd never used flex seal before and it was super <laughs> sticky so then i went and i took a cloth and i was rubbing off the flex seal and it took all the paint with it and and it didn't come off completely so now so now I have one Jordan three flip in mint condition, <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect condition. Uh, and, then, and the other one, the other one, and I display it right here on my desk. You should you you should you should have seriously kept you should have seriously kept that uh, for a showpiece because it, that's a great story, bro. It, it, like you, and you know what the essence the essence of ever doing anything in life is making a mistake and learning from it. And that is the prime example of, of making a mistake and learning from it and not to do it again. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So going back to it, uh, the red elephant print, Jordan 1s, they have a white, a black, and a red, Ooh, 40 bucks. Nice. Um, the, these actually, these are not the ones you saw. 
the ones that you saw were already bleached when I got them. Mm -hmm. um, and I bleached them a little bit more. But these I bought brand new dead stock. So I have a pair of um, – it's the one I show you where I have one bleached and one still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I, so that's the 119. Um, of course, I got some random stuff like I bought Legos for my kids. Um, <laughs> oh, ready? Blue Lagoon, Gatorade, Jordan 1's, $68. <laughs> <laughs> this is a kick this is a killer dude ready jordan won 2013 breads 162 Damn. can you believe that <laughs> Damn. oh this one was awesome too look at this um oh this never this never went through this was uh the sale got canceled oh um here's my 2009 shadows 99, 97. <laughs> Which, by the way, I cleaned, I cleaned and they look amazing. Um, here's my here's my NYC to Paris. Um, one ten. And uh, oh damn! Uh, oh, Leroy Smith's eighty five, the NDS. And yeah. and. And um, one of the, one of the most important things that Cam normally says, or, or normally says, is um, why buy sneakers for resale or resale when you can go back in history in the archives and get a sneaker that is awesome for yeah. you. Yeah, and the crates. Yeah, and I use that on my Instagram where I, I put it to a vote, and of course the vote went towards the Crimson's. But I was like, why? Like, what shoe do you prefer? Do you prefer the 11 Lab 4 Jordan 4, or do you prefer the Red Thunder or the Crimson? Give me the and, Lab any day. Yeah, and, and I showed that on StockX right now, the price of the 11 Lab 4 is like $5 more than the price of the Crimson's. So if you're going to pay resale, why not buy like an actual cool, amazing sneaker yep. than, than buy the one that, and, and like for, for someone like you, if you're going to pay resale and then you're not going to wear them so you're not cloned and you're not looking like everybody else, then if you're <laughs> going to pay resale, you should be buying a sneaker from a year ago or two years ago instead. Yep, and yep, 100%. Just get, 100%. To get people to that way. So um, I have to restore these, but they're actually, they are 100% the NDS. But of course, the, the sole, like if I wore them today, they would just crack. But you can't see any cracking. So I have burgundies. I have Jordan 5 burgundies I got for 102 OG all. Um, crimson, hyper crimson, hyper crimsons. We were just talking about that shoe. Yep, 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 yep. Another, another pair of hyper crimsons. Like four <laughs> days later, for ninety. Uh, ninety bucks for a hyper crimson right now is crazy. <laughs> your your history is making me and Q just say. Cool, cool, all right. Cam, I, I, I think I think that's that's enough deep diving for this time being because we are going to go and answer those two questions because you might come across them in a bit. What is the one of the most like amazing, like unbelievable BNDS cops you've ever done? So you might you might want to show us all three. Okay, so BNDS cop that I've ever done. I mean, I I to me it's the one that I show all the time, and it's. And I'll unshare my screen. <laughs> Tell us a bit about that sneaker, bro. If so, people are listening, people to this. do not know this is the Jordan Five Bin Twenty Three. There was only two thousand one hundred and thirty-three pairs of this sneaker in existence. Um, these are size fourteens. They distribute shoes on a bell curve, which means anything in the low size, like a seven to a high size like a 14 is going to be the lowest amount produced where if you get into a 9 or a 10 you're going to have the max so bell curve right you um, might there so might be 50 there might, of that shoe yeah there might be like yeah. 50 total of this shoe um it was an eBay auction it started <laughs> it started at 599 um i've never spent 599 on a shoe in my life and i i i just followed it like i i one of my techniques is you don't ever bid you just follow. Yeah. And then, you know, 15 minutes before the auction ended, it was still at five ninety nine. So I bid on it because I couldn't not bid on it. And I got it for five ninety nine because nobody else bid. And the guy and the guy shipped them to me. So And how much is the price at the moment, bro? Okay, so currently the price on StockX for this shoe, there's one on StockX and it's five grand. Um, five. 
thousand dollar shoe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Five thousand dollar shoe for so, six hundred. So, 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 so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say this I'm gonna say this right. So, bro, if you and I know you will never get rid of this, but if you was to go and put that for two to three grand on eBay, knowing that it's VNDS, is that VNDS, right? Oh yeah, it's it's. Yeah. To be honest, it could be DS, but I I yeah. can't say it's VNDS be, or DS because I don't know. But there's no sign of wear on the shoe right now. So, so. if you was to put that for three grand, you just basically got. To and two thousand four hundred pound profit on a sneaker that you bought for six hundred pounds, like, and yeah. you're never gonna get rid of that because you know, bro, that is a that sneaker is probably one of the hardest sneakers to cop. That is that is like a unicorn, bro. That is like a unicorn sneaker, hard to get, and like that that's that hunt paid off. That hunt definitely paid off. The legit that hunt, grill. hunt definitely yeah. paid off, bro. A legit grill right there. It really is a legit grill. And the thing about it, I was, I was talking, I was actually talking to my wife about this the other night. And here it is. This is currently StockX size fourteen. Um, you can see it. Even the last sale was fourteen hundred. Um, you, you can't, you can't, you can't actually price this shoe. It's, imp- it's. You, you literally should not be able to price this shoe. So, like, if I said, "What is a cool gray eleven worth?" You can go to StockX, and you could actually see a history. Yeah. Of, of all the sales associated with a shoe, right? And you would say, okay, cool. There, there's 400 sales, and it's averaging between. What, when 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 did that come out? When did it been shoe, been, shoe's a 2011. been 20? Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a 2011. So, you, so it's 11 years old. You you need to get some wear into that, just just in case that that sole blows out. I know. Well, if it and if it does blow out, what do we do, TJ? Soul swap. Soul swap it. That's right. Nah. We need to know how to do that stuff. All right. So anyways, um, the reason why I'm mentioning it is so if I go to like any type of shoe, like let's go to an Amma Meniere like right now. So we'll do now notice the history on this because this is important. Two There's, There's two, two sales. sales, two sales, and both of them were in 2017. There hasn't been any sales since 2017. And there's only one shoe available. Like, so if you actually go on your phone, it'll say like one shoe available. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So now I go to like an Amma Meniere. I pull up the three, right? And I and I'll go to a same. I'll go to size fourteen, which is the four, uh, fifteen and a half, right? And I'll and I'll look at all the sales. And a lot, yeah, a lot of sales. you got you you, so you got history. So, you so got the history idea is like this shoe has the capability of being priced, of yeah, being yeah. of being evaluated, right? You can average it, right? You can average it. You can say. Like if I just look at January, the January valuation for the shoe is probably about six hundred because they got some in the seven hundred range, some in the five hundred range. So six fifty would probably be the valuation, and that's just because it sold that many times in January. But if you look, you know, last three months, whatever. So I can price the shoe. You can't the only, price the bin twenty three. The it only is literally you're... worth. It is worth whatever somebody is yeah. willing to pay for it. That's it. Exactly. Don't need. The only equivalent you're ever going to get to that is if in 11 years' time, there's only one of those Amamania Freeze left and it's not been sold over the last three years, then you can't put a price to it. And it can't because they, they produce too many. That That's the yeah. whole point. So like the Amamania is still a sought after. It is considered a rare shoe because it was released from a, a boutique location, right? So I don't know how many of this shoe exists, but clearly there's enough of them that exist to see that sale history, right? The, there's 2,133 bin 23s, period. There's less if you go to the Jordan 8. Mm-hmm. There's like 1,700 of those or something. So so that you can't, the only way that you could value it is if you went out to people and said, you know, like, what are you willing to pay for this? And you did that to enough sneaker stores, like 100, where you, they everybody offered this amount, so this is what people were. Otherwise, if I find someone that wants these shoes and is willing to pay for them, they may pay five grand. They may pay four grand. So, or they may not pay more than six hundred, and I got them for what they're worth. Who knows? Yeah. And, and 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 this is this is when you get to the M, uh, you know the M and four categories because like being a friends and family, you could probably say those being twenty threes is like a friends and family. It is so rare to pick them up it's that rare. you would need to be connected to actually get a, a sneaker that that. That tough. That 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 hands down is a grail. 
that me and Q can sit here and say that sneaker is probably on par or even better than the original Black Metallic Fives. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to put it. I'm, yeah, as far as fives go, that that would be like I know there's the trophy rooms, there's the premium and all that, but nah, bro, that that is. And I love y'all know I will I will go on and on about the Black Metallic Five. It's my favorite sneaker. That shoe is the only shoe that trumps the Black Metallic Five for yep, me. Yep, yep, and yep, it's yep. appropriate because it's based on the Black Five. Black it has Metallic. the white laces. Exactly. And nah, it's, it's the it's only like, shoe that you could probably soul swap with, with the Black Metallic Five. The Black Metallic <laughs> as as it is. It is as it is. It is, it is literally a black. It is the it is the black metallic five soul. Right. It has the red jump, man. Uh there there are other fives. You can do the fire red, you know, mm-hmm. that has the red jump man. But as is, you could take a black metallic and soul swap that one if you needed to. And that that the leather on that shoe is gonna be good for a long, long, it is, long it is, time. If you read about the shoe, it is literally Italian leather. Right. Yeah. So so the yeah. only thing that you would have to do with that shoe is soul swapping. Any Jordan 5 that comes out with the ice bottom and a red jump man on the bottom, you can swap with that shoe and hopefully right. you know how to paint. Well, the <laughs> thing is is like if you if you do soul swaps, the whole point of a soul swap um and this is an example by the way. So so this is so this will be an example of a shoe that I can, I will never find the equivalent color sole to be able to swap with this. So what you do is you take the the actual sole mm-hmm. and keep it because this is this is where the green comes in, right? It's the this is the only thing that you need to maintain the integrity of the original shoe. Right. This part you can get from any shoe that you want because this is the painted part. Right. So right. then, so that's what you do when you sole swap. You take the upper mm-hmm. off, you take that the sole off, and then you you replace the midsole, and the midsole it can be any color you want it to be. Yeah, so, with so fives, with, with yeah. fives and um, fours and threes. Yeah, it, twos. I mean, really, any any elevens. Shoe, yeah, really, any shoe because they're all broken down into into modular pieces, where part of the shoe is rubber, part of the shoe is foam, and then you have the yeah. upper. Yeah, and you can't paint that rubber; it won't hold. No, you can you no. can only hope to dye a, a clear sole, maybe, but yeah. trying yeah. to change the color on a rubber is not happening. No, and that's so, actually the reason why the Dave Whites. Um, need to be kept up with, with with paint because the Dave Whites are actually painted black on the toe. That's how the black happens. So you you can already you can already see with some of the, the, the Dave Whites just to the it fades to there. white. You, it scratches yeah. to white. And yeah. they, they go. They just. They... Yep. So, uh, so, so on the separate last 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 question before we um, uh, stop this amazing podcast um, is what was the holy shit. Oh my god, what did I just buy? Oh damn, I just got absolutely ripped off here. <laughs> like, well, hell no. It's happened to me so many times, but fortunately <laughs> yeah, fortunately I'm very I'm very good at um uh you know like returning stuff, right? Yep. But um I bought just even this year before I bought the bins I ran into two deals that were like unheard of. And it was the first one were Travis Scott fragment lows for six. So I bought them and then I got them home and I, I, I authenticated them. And then I actually also use an authentication app and I believe they were fake. The app of course, believe they were fake. So then I had to go through the whole thing about proving to the, the Macari is where I bought them. I had to prove to Macari that they were fake, which wasn't that hard. And then I got my money back. Mm-hmm. Then like two, okay. maybe like a week later, I bought a pair of Travis Scott Mocha Lows for 600 And I wanted them to be real so bad. Like they fit well. The material was great. Like I was like, oh man, these these have to be. But the one thing that got me, if you're familiar with with fake um, fake Jordan 1s, is the back of the tongue tag where it has the trademark and the qual light and all that stuff fakes. And I don't know why this is, but it's almost guaranteed always going to happen. There's like a wave to the, to the top of the text. Right. So yeah, like, yeah. 
so like the the letters will shorten and long elongate but then if you have a real you, sh- one, you, sh- you showed me that as well you showed me that as well so and, I, and you could so see that was the only it. thing and i was like maybe maybe my eyes are deceiving me so i got them authenticated and of course they were fake so i had to return those um but those, that's like 1200 bucks <laughs> in fake shoes in like a week yeah, that yeah, i had to that i had to go back but, on but but this comes this comes to my point where I, I've always said this and I always will train this. I will never, never, ever buy a Travis Scott Mocha 1 high or a low at this point in time ever in my life because I know those fakes yeah. are actually so good that they passed the legit check. Yeah. And I know, uh, well, there's rumors, but apparently there's rumors, allegedly there's rumors that a thousand of those fake peers went through StockX when they originally kind of came out with those mocker ones. Yeah. Yeah. So I ne- for me, I missed, I'm walking away. I missed yeah. that and I'm walking away because I'm not going to buy a pair of sneakers. And this is where, this is when, when you come into like pick, picking up DS sneakers, I would always make sure it's either on the release date or I have a couple of days between the release date or the restocks to actually check them. But if you do have to pay that resale, do your due diligence. Make sure you check it. Get the black light in. Make sure you check it. And even if you need to use one of the recheck check, check, like the check yeah. to actually do it, just do it. Just be, peace of mind. Make sure it's legit. Make sure you get a pair. But there is also there's also been cases where some people grab real pairs, swap them out at home for fake pairs, send them back, and actually got the fake prices because they're really cheap. So you don't want to be sucker punched into that. So yeah, and as I said, and I just want to touch on that point quickly because like that's a big problem. That's a big, yeah. big problem. Yeah, that's but, that's one thing uh I've learned from Cam since I've known him. Um, especially now um that I have bought a couple more pairs of VNDS. If I miss a release, unless it's a re- a release that I really, 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 really want, I'll save my money and go back and buy something VNDS right. that I want. As bad, if not more, than yeah. the shoe that I took the and, hell off. And let's 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 be honest. Um, the UA companies out there, it only it, the first month or two is going to be hard for them to replicate that sneaker. But once yeah. they get that sneaker in hand, they've got it. Yeah. So yeah. be careful. Yeah, but part of part of the lesson of becoming like the shoe dragon is if you <laughs> want to win big, you have to be able to be willing to lose big. Exactly, exactly. You know what I mean? So you can't cop shoes 100%. at 100%. a fraction of what they're worth unless you're willing to buy willing to buy fake shoes, determine they're fake, and then go through the process of returning. Exactly, exactly. And, that, and that's one of the important things is is when when you when 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 we say you cam you are the historian you are the gandalf you are the power and knowledge of vnds as we know it at this moment in time um the reason why we say that is because you have the knowledge and the experience to legit check a sneaker to see what's if you to see whoa oh this doesn't look right and i, I i've got some experience obviously when, when you pick up re, when you pick up sneakers from like resellers or restocks or or StockX or whatever whatever company other company you use you have to legit check it you can't yeah. trust it on the basis so you legit check it so when when we had that conversation in our group when somebody put in the uh, was it called? Dawn Becker fours with a Superman it looked off straight off the bat to me and and like you can identify certain things here and there and you're like that doesn't look right to me so you go and check it and there's loads of information online to go and check these pairs and to, to, to kind of legit check them so yeah you have to you have you are if you you have to get your knowledge base up and knowledge is always power you have to get your knowledge base up you have to get your experience up to work out what you got in hand is not a sucker punch from a person that's actually trying to give you a UA or, or a fake. So yeah, it's important to actually get that knowledge base. It's important to actually know what you're doing and maneuver. But like I say, you learn with experience. You always learn with experience. You might buy it in, it might look fake, you might legit check it, it might be fake, and you send it back. But you've gone through the experience, you learn through the experience. And there's always telltale marks. There's always telltale marks on these pairs. But unfortunately, currently, with all the quality issues we're going through, some even legit pairs look fake. So yeah. <laughs> let's 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 <laughs> we're gonna save that. We're gonna save that for another show. Um Cam, it has been great to have you on the shoe dog podcast. <laughs> this will hopefully not be your last time on the podcast. Yeah, so no, much information um 
wealth of knowledge um, that you have. And you definitely are an inspiration to, I know myself and TJ, as well as some of the other bros from uh, the group. The, 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 fact, the fact that you have acquired the, the type of collection that you have, the way you have is, it's unheard of, man. And yep, 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 I yep. appreciate you. I know uh, TJ appreciates you a lot. We ha- we have 100%. both <laughs> we have both received W's from you, and yep, yep. Um, you just Cam actually just just put something in my DM last night that I'm still debating <laughs> over. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it, 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 funny, it, it, I, I did, it, I did it, it to it, TJ too, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Black metallic pipes. Yeah, you probably every, every time every time I see an email from a uh, message from uh, Cam, it's like. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, yeah, man. Look, we Bro, was, we uh, running. Uh, we running. We running towards. We running towards them. Them BNDSs, man. Twenty twenty two. I know. I am. Yeah, I'm no, running towards. I, I think this is just an introduction into Cam, and he will be on way more. Like we will break down subjects. And this this live being about two hours and fifteen minutes, it was supposed to be an hour and a half. But it, the wealth of knowledge and experience, and and the fun that we have just talking is it, it feels like a a normal conversation on the over the phone. And it's supposed to be like that. But it's, yeah. I'm 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 pretty sure Cam, you'll be back talking to yeah. us about different. I would different, love to. Man. And we haven't. I would love to. And we haven't even we haven't even touched customs. We have not touched customs. No, that's when when you come back. We have to do a deep dive <laughs> into the customs as well um, with TJ because I know y'all both do great, great work. So um, I can't wait. I can't wait to get into that too. <laughs> All, right. All right, Q, do you want to you just wind, us, wind us down and we'll um, say bye? <laughs> as my partner TJ would say, hope y'all have a great day, a great week, <laughs> a great month, a great year, and hopefully... All y'all can cop the VNDSs that you like because you deserve <laughs> the VNDSs that you want. You know exactly that. Exactly that. Peace. Peace. <laughs>